Okay, we're going to open up. We are having a public hearing. Um, notice, City of Newport, notice of public hearing. Notice hereby given to the residents of the Newport City, Vermont, that the Newport City Council will host a public hearing on Monday, December 18th in the City Council Room, 222 Main Street, 6.30 p.m. The hearing will be held for purpose of public review of and comment on the proposed amendment to the Newport City Plan pursuant to Title 24 of VSA Chapter 117. The purpose of the proposed Newport City Plan is to establish a coordinated, comprehensive planning process to guide decisions made by the City. The proposed plan amendment is a minor one and entails the inclusion of maps developed by the Northern, Northeastern Vermont Development Association. No substantive changes are proposed to the plan. And now I have the public hearing open for the changes to the municipal plan. And basically, all that was changed was the inclusion of the maps of the city. They were inadvertently not included in the original plan which was approved um, and so we had to add the maps and this was all because um, it came to light because we are going for our designated downtown renewal and so we just wanted to have it more formalized with the various maps. The maps include, um, we don't have the maps on display. Um, I think they're attached to the back. Of the <coughs> They are attached. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can read the maps are right here. That's what I was they include a base map of the city, a land cover map of the city, the zoning, both of the photography, natural constraints of development, and the designated downtown. Gee, I didn't mean to scare you away uh, by reading the... <laughs> okay. Are there any questions from any, anybody in regards to the amendments to the municipal plan? This is all maps that had been available, had, had existed before and had been available and were just were omitted from the plan but would be better in the plan. There was correctly. a phrase that they were being worked on when they were actually mm -hmm. complete, right. and so we now have the complete set of maps. And well, very nice. <laughs> completed, so. Picture being worth a thousand words. Yes, mm -hmm. and it was a requirement, uh, having the maps is a requirement of the designating downtown New York. Mm -hmm. and so by having them in the plan, we now have a complete city plan. <clears throat> And with that, if there are no questions on that aspect, I'll close the public hearing and call the Newport City Council meeting to order for Monday, December 18th, 2017, in the City Council Room. All members of the City Council are present. Others include Laura Dogan, our City Manager, and James Johnson, our Clerk Treasurer. The next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of December 4th, 2017. I would entertain a motion. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve the account for minutes of 4th of December with two typos from page 2 that uh, James is already corrected. Just put that there. Okay. Or it went from uh, dining to dinner. Because you might as well check it. Dining to dinner. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Anything else on that? Oh, the motion to be made. Is there a second? Made and seconded with two minor corrections. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Next item is comments by members of the public, and this is an opportunity for our members to talk about anything which is not on the agenda. I noticed uh, the majority of people who signed here are for the snowmobile trail, except 
We have a Haley Hotch, Hotch, if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, good evening, my name is Haley Hope, um, and I'm a new resident here in Newport. Um, as a young professional who's been civically engaged in the communities that I lived in previously, um, I wanted to voice my shock and concern regarding how community members um, have been treated in this council setting. I've attended multiple council meetings since moving to Newport, and I've witnessed disrespect, contempt, and intimidation directed at community attendees. Um, it's disappointing to see because this is not the case in other communities that I've been a part of, um, and I don't believe that it should be the case here. Uh, the people in this room, all of us care deeply about our neighbors and the city's well-being. You are public servants, meaning that you are chosen to serve all members of our community regardless of our differences in opinion. I simply wanted to take this opportunity to ask that you are mindful to treat the passionate and concerned citizens in this room with patience and respect going forward. I guess I have to identify myself. I'm Brian McNeil, and I live in the city of Newport. And I just want to ask a question here. When uh, you have a, a, a item in the states um, like the municipal plan vote, can we as the public have a say so before you actually take that vote as a council, or do we have to do it? It's hard to do it before because we don't know what your uh, if there's any changes when you're ready to vote for that particular uh, item, and uh, can we have uh, the opportunity to be able to comment on those individuals? Yes, whenever there's a vote, before the vote is taken, there, <coughs> excuse me, whenever there is a item on the agenda that says vote, before the vote is actually taken, there's an opening up for public comment. Moving on, the next item is municipal plan vote. <coughs> and at this time, we would need a motion to approve the minor amendment to the municipal plan. I'll make that motion. The motion made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. And now discussion. Did you have something? Brian? Yes, yeah, sir. great. Okay, I just want to make sure now that on the last paragraph it states there, uh, and I, I read it real fast. The, the city has determined that it's necessary to inform the reader of this plan. The uh, uh, proposed EB-5 projects are now void. While this notice is regrettably necessary, it is nevertheless a known and significant update affecting the near-term future of the city. And one of those effects is, uh, like the state, uh, Newport wants to revitalize the downtown area. She had to have another map made to do so, things of the sort. But do the people, do you believe that the city of Newport and the residents and the, and know exactly why uh, that happened? And especially because of the fact that in 2013, the council was told that that was a corrupt and fraud uh, program that was presented by the U.S. government, and it wasn't at that time uh, that uh, they were still innocent until they became guilty when it was when they finally worked on it uh, this last year. When the plan was created in 2014 and adopted in 2015, the EB-5 program was still a viable program. Nothing had come to light in the state of Vermont or locally that indicated any type of corruption that was still a valid aspect of the municipal plan. So that is why it was in the 2015 plan, because nothing had come to light as far as the state of Vermont or the city, as far as any illegal activity. Things were still on track, permits were still being gathered, and so there was nothing to say to take it out of the plan. <coughs> Anything else on the municipal plan? Anything from council members? Then all those in favor of the motion to approve the amended plan, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
The ayes have it. Motion carries. The next item is to approve the 2018 calendar year city council meeting dates. So I generated a proposed schedule based on this, uh, based on this year's schedule and knowing when the holidays are. Um, charter says you meet the first and the first Monday and then the third Monday is optional as I understand it. So I've tried to keep these to two meetings a month. Um, can't keep them to every single Monday due to Monday holidays, but can with some regularity keep it to the third Monday of the month. And the one thing that I wanted to point out is that our centennial celebration is going to be, uh, we could have a meeting on July 3rd, and I would um, highly recommend we not meet that particular Monday because we're going to be out straight with the centennial celebration festivities that's right in the thick of it. So I had proposed that we meet July 9th and July 16th that particular month. And that's entirely up to you if you'd like to do that. Um, the rest, uh, you take a look at these, match them up with your calendar. They're pretty close to what we met this year, but for that change. Anybody see anything? <laughs> I've already gone over the list. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. What was the question? Can we do that by the charter saying the first Monday of the month? Yes, yeah. Can't do it every month. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else on the proposed schedule for the upcoming year? In some circles, uh, April 2nd, which is Easter Monday, is a holiday, and I will be tired, but I will be available. <laughs> Any other questions on the calendar? May, may I ask a question? Is it required that you have your informational meeting about the annual meeting the night before the vote? No. Um, a little history. We thought we would have more people attend an informational meeting about the budget and the appropriations and so on and so forth. So we decided to have it on a Saturday, thinking, well, Saturday more people get, you know, during the day, not at night, figured more people might come out during the day. We had less. And so we decided to keep it as part of a regular council meeting the night before the town meeting, the night before the, the annual meeting. Right. So may I follow up on that? My, for those that come and attend the meeting, it's informational. The, there's no opportunity for the press to cover it, that meeting, and share that information with a wider audience because it's the night before and we aren't eight, we don't go to press. Mo none of us would publish that for the next day. So if it's just traditional or if you're really trying to reach more people, the February 19th would be a better meeting, but I don't know if you have your city report back yet or whatever, but I'm just in the interest of providing more discussion earlier. February 19th. It's a suggestion. We can check and see if we maybe could look into it. We could always change it to be the 19th if we can. I'm not sure if the end of the would be. It has to be at least five days or it can't be more than five days? It's got to be within the five days. Okay. So it couldn't be the, the preceding Monday or something like that? No, I don't think so. You could just check into that. That would be good. Well, we'll just that. No, that's a good point. Just throwing it out for right. information's sake rather than, I mean, I'm, it's irrelevant to me. I don't vote here. But in the interest of sharing information, it would make sense. But Because usually, I know Derby has their actual voting meeting the night, Monday night, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. And we created the informational meeting, of course, because the voters years ago decided to do away with the regular, the old-fashioned traditional town meeting. Right. <clears throat> so, okay. Um, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Um, to follow on on my colleagues' comments, um, it might be possible 
to have the official meeting the night before, but to schedule a period to discuss some of the issues that will be on the ballot on the February 19th meeting so that information can get to the public and people who want more details could show up at the Monday night meeting. Just, you know, <coughs> raising that as a possibility. Press packets or something like that. Or we could have, we just, we just have it as <coughs> an item where we discuss, we just have a period where we discuss the items on the ballot. And you can't change anything at that point. And it's already, the ballots are already printed and absentees have already been, you know, mailed and things like that. But we can at least have an inform informational meeting. Also, now that I think about it, if you are planning to put the water tower issue back on the ballot uh, for the March town meeting, you're going to have to have hearings anyway, so you could combine that as well. Just right. Right. very good. Okay. Any other can I get a motion so I can change the word proposed to approved? So moved. Thank you. The motion made. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Do, do we want to do provisionally approved or just approved? And we can approve we these because these are the yeah. actual dates, yeah. firm yeah. dates. If we need to amend it. Oh, right. If we need to have an additional meeting. Yeah. Okay. We can always add additional meetings throughout the year as we need. And, yeah. and as far as the informational type meeting. That's just uh, part of a regular council meeting, so that can be moved to the 19th, or we could even have a special meeting to do it. So, are there any, so a motion made and seconded. Made seconded. Any discussion on that, on the calendar? And all those in favor say aye. All aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is the water sewer utility van replacement follow up. Tom Bernier, I believe, is here. And you received information for us. As you requested, I met with the three local dealers. Uh, two were able to do their spec, as I spelled out in the memo. Uh, East Ford and uh, the ladder on sale. Um, I'm requesting that we purchase the van from the library auto sales for $37,000 and change. Questions from the council members? We received a memo from Tom. The two different quotes, one was from Hayes Ford, and it was in the amount of 41958 The other one, which met the spec, was the library A. Auto sales, and they were their quote was thirty-seven thousand two hundred forty-two dollars and sixty-three cents. <coughs> Go ahead. Um, do you have your the paperwork there with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. On the quote from delivery, you've got ninety-eight seventy-seven for the unicell body installed and delivered, but on the quote itself, it doesn't match up. Is that because that's an installation charge involved in that as well, or? Well, if you go by his, uh, um, the, the first sheet I gave you, the email sheet, mm -hmm. that broke it all out the cost. Right. So the cost on that spreadsheet from Unisol is a little bit different than what he actually thought I had right here. That was a, his quote came as an email. Okay. Assuming you get, you get that first sheet. Yeah. Right. So he's got it broke out loud. So the Unicell was uh, 9877. Right. But on the quote sheet itself, it was 9736. Two pages later. With freight involved. And it was over $10,000. I'm going by his quoted price. I don't care what the, what the Unicell price was. Okay. Going by okay. Point of choice. okay. Right here. Not yes. actual. Okay. So as long as then we should note that. Okay. If that's when you go. Okay. <coughs> You're probably giving us a discount. 
Any other questions on on this? Then we would need a motion to approve. Whoops. <coughs> Make that motion. Okay. So motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second it. Made and seconded. Discussion. <clears throat> yes. Before the vote, now uh, did uh, any did anybody go to? Uh, we have another auto dealer. It's not Newport. It's North Point, and they handle Ram. Did mm -hmm. anybody they couldn't go meet our spec? Pardon? They could not meet our spec. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Anything else? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to also say that this is better than two weeks ago when you thought it would be around 50000 So Yes, it was a lot better. Cause in a two-week delay, we saved 13000 well, That's probably not for you. High, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> The next item on the agenda um, is the VAS proposal, and I'm going to give, uh, I think Ernie is going to participate by phone, this is Ernie Pomelo. Ernie Pomelo, who's the owner of Vista, would like to participate in that whole complex by phone. I hope he, he said he had a meeting, so if he doesn't answer, that's because he's in on the meeting. Right, right. so then we will continue on. <laughs> yeah. No, that was the municipal plan. That was the city plan. These are the maps. Ernie Pomelo. Hi, Ernie. It's Laura Dolgan and the Newport City Council in a room full of people. How are you? I'm good. Good evening. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, you are on speaker, and the mayor great. has just. I'm going to turn you up. <laughs> um, the mayor has <laughs> has just um, called the VAS proposal um, on the agenda, so I wanted to make sure that you were on the phone to hear it, and with that, I'll sure. turn it over to the mayor. Thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you. you. This uh, was a proposal that was presented two weeks ago at the city council meeting, and I believe we have Mr. Goslin here. Did you have other things you'd like to add or yeah, discuss? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can address the crowd because there's some new faces. Um, so for those that uh, don't know me, my name is Roger Goslin, and I'm here representing uh, Vermont Association of Snow Travelers, which is the statewide organization that manages the 5,000 miles of snowmobile trail in Vermont. Um, I'm here to follow up on a proposal that I brought forward to the city council last uh, last two weeks ago at the last meeting um, to try to get a snowmobile trail into the city to get snowmobilers in here um, to, to patronize the local businesses. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Every time I, uh, I drive through Newport, I attend a city event, I go to a city business, um, I walk the city streets, the conversation about how can we make this a better place always comes up. And this is the way that I'm proposing that we do this, especially during the winter time. I want to get people in here. I want to get people in here that are going to enjoy this during the winter time and that are also going to come back during the summer, patronize these businesses, and see what Newport has to offer. I have found what I believe is the safest, most efficient um, manner to do that by um, bringing snowmobiles down through Broadview Street to Landing Street and then getting them into the Causeway area and then eventually hopefully to downtown. Um, it's, uh, it keeps us off the ice, which is um, unpredictable, can be unsafe at times. Um, yes, there are times when it is safe for sure, but there are, um, you know, weeks before and weeks towards the end of the season where the ice is not a safe place to take. So um, those are weeks up to a month that this city is not going to see snowmobilers. And that goes against what I'm trying to do here. Um, so thank you for having me back. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to hear me out last week or two weeks ago. Um, and at some point, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, it would be nice to hear uh, each one of the members of the council's opinions or, um, or how they see this. You know, kind of hold the council. Okay. Thanks. And we have, um, it was requested by Jillian Stan Staniforth to <coughs> have a small presentation, so I 
And she she emailed some slides or three slides. Um, I'm sorry, I thought I would get the big screen, so I'm not sure how well this you know will what? translate. We can, we can put that down. We can put that down. That's okay. But um, I'd like to take these to the city council members. And a letter. Get a chief. And a, a petition. Um, should I go back to my seat? Or? Just stay right up here. Okay. It'll just take a second for the projector. I think it's coming on now. It's on there now. Um, I'd like. Hi. Um, Duplicate. It's just it's one piece for you each. Sorry. Um, uh, my name is Jillian Staniforth. I live at 111 Broadview Avenue, and I've lived there for 28 years um, in the city of Newport. I also work at um, North Country Career Center, so I not only live in the area, I also work in the immediate area. Um, I'd like to make a short statement, and then I'd just like to do a presentation that shows um, a visual of what's being proposed. I'm a very visual person and I thought it might help clarify um, the scale of the proposal and how it may impact um, the neighborhood. Um, the final comment made to me at the last meeting on December 4th was, quote, you should change your culture, end quote. I didn't know how to respond to this um, but I went home and I did a lot of soul searching. For the past two weeks, I've talked to hundreds. For the past two weeks, I've talked to hundreds of people of all ages and all walks of life, and I realized my culture is just fine, and it lies within the majority boundaries of how culture is defined in our city and in this county. And most people told me they define culture as respect collaborative living, and recognizing the differences of others. Everyone I talked to from a volunteer who gives snowmobile safety course to the students at my school where I work to my oldest neighbor believe that people are free to choose and recreate how, where, and when <coughs> they want without infringing on others. We all like to do different things, and we all owe our neighbors the same right. Everyone also agreed that economic development is important and necessary and should be done with long-term vision and planning that should not create an us versus them mentality, but it should be a reality that can reconcile the right to live and work in a peaceful, productive <coughs> environment that respects both commercial and residential areas and recognizes the difference between them. An alternative route that is exclusive for snowmobile recreation is the prudent and appropriate action in this case. Um, this to me means that Newport City is in trying to encourage snowmobile traffic that will grow and make significant contributions to the economy. I agree with that and every person that I talk to also agrees with that. However, <coughs> the majority of the people who live in my residential neighborhood and 150 other people who signed my petition believe that if that's the case for <coughs> snowmobile um, to come into Newport, it should be done in commercial areas where commerce exists and where it will be safe and most effective. I would be very happy to work to this end with VAST and with any other group that wants to raise funds and try and find a dedicated snowmobile trail that will lead to and pass by commercial enterprises that will welcome businesses. Um, just to be brief, in the last two weeks, these are facts and figures I've accumulated. The proposed snowmobile trail that goes down through Perry Beach Park onto Broadview and the landing is almost four tenths of a mile long. Six out of six of the property owners that I visited on my immediate street I should actually say five and a half because one person I didn't get to talk to. Five and a half out of the seven homes, one is not occupied. So those five and a half property owners um, are not in favor of the trail on our street, and I will explain why. 
Um, Twelve of the property owners that I personally visited on Duchess, Hoskins, and Colfax, again, are not in favor of a um, snowmobile trail down a small residential area that has been designated as a bike path. This gives me 18 out of 21 houses in my immediate neighborhood that are not in favor of the snowmobiles sharing the road in these small, narrow streets um, with walkers, snowshoers, uh, dogs, children, um, whatever. And that's what we have in our neighborhood right now. Approximately 150 residents of the Newport Derby and surrounding towns signed a petition that I presented to the City Council. Uh, that they request that the bike path and the recreational trail be left um, for non-vehicular traffic whenever possible due to safety concerns. Um, I have also learned 85 decibels of noise is harmful to human hearing. A snowmobile manufacturer told me snowmobiles are now um, manufactured at 82 decibels, <coughs> which is very close to that threshold. Um, assuming that you have more than one snowmobile going past at a time, um, that does increase over the threshold of harm to human hearing. Um, the other thing that I was informed of is that if a groomer is going to run on the city streets between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. with lights and noise, that would actually be a violation of the Newport City Ordinance Policy Section 2, Subsection D. Um, I now like to just go over um, three visuals to give you an idea of what will happen on our neighborhood. This is Freeman Street here, and I have to apologize, I'm not a cartographer and I'm not an expert. The width is to scale. So I went out and measured this with a tape measure on my own two little feet, and I put it on a grid to scale. Um, Freeman Street, which is right here, is 26 feet wide, and it has vehicular traffic in both directions. There are seven houses that have driveways on that street that back onto that street. The current snowmobile bike path is separate from the street. It is approximately 10 feet wide with an 8 foot buffer between the snowmobile trail, the walking trail, and the street. The houses on average are 46, um, 47 feet from Freeman Street and 81 feet from the actual snowmobile trail. Um, in Canada, the regulation is that where they run trails past residential, they recommend at least 20 meters, which is at least 60 feet. So for the people of Freeman Street, that does exist. Could you go to the next slide, please? This is my street. This, sorry. Um, this is Broadview Avenue. My street is 19 feet wide. And the snowmobile trail, and these are my little images, if you can see them all back there. We have snowmobiles, we have cars, we have bikes, we have walkers. So there is no separate exclusive trail for snowmobiles to travel on. They would actually travel on this road, which is 19 feet wide. There are seven driveways that enter onto Broadview Avenue, and the houses are at an average of 25 feet from the street, which would be the snowmobile trail. So every house on my street is within 25 feet of the snowmobile trail. Um, we also have Duchess Street, which, which comes into Broadview, um, where there's a walking path and there's two-way traffic, and this is Landing Street down here. Um, could you go to the third slide, please? So this is where it gets a little confusing, and this is, again, to scale in width, and it shows you the difference between the current <coughs> snowmobile trail, which is on Freeman Street, and the proposed, which is on my street, and I will show you. So if you look at where the snowmobiles would run, <coughs> first of all, the major difference is on Freeman Street, they don't run on the street with cars. On my street, they would. On Freeman Street, the houses are 81 feet from the bike path snowmobile trail. On my street, they're here. So this is an actual scale. 
our front doors are here, our driveways exit onto this path on Freeman Street. It's a very different configuration. I think um, there's nobody I talked to that would suggest they wanted a snowmobile trail running 25 feet from their front door. And um, this would also include groomers coming down the street. Again, if they come in the night, that is a, um, a noise issue, it's a light issue, and it creates a disturbance for our neighborhood. I really have nothing else to say. Um, I appreciate the council listening to me. I think that, um, again, in, the, in all honesty, the vast majority of my neighborhood is not in favor of this. And that involves over 30 residences with dogs and children and old people and shut-ins. And I think that as citizens of Newport, that um, we would respectfully request that an alternative route that is exclusive for snowmobiles that would make our neighborhood safe and quiet should be um, the solution to this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Oh. Oh, thank you. Okay. Question, yes. I'd like, <clears throat> I don't have a presentation, but I'd like to speak up as well. Uh, Frank Ricciardi, I own Lago Trattoria on the corner of Main Street and Coventry Street. And I think it's a crime that we live in an area that thrives on the tourist community to make money, to help us all survive these long winters, to not let a snowmobile trail come through here. Snowmobile trails go through Stowe, they go through every other small town around here. Yes, we're a city. Yes, they're going to make noise, but I bet you a snowplow makes more noise than the snowmobile trail does or the groomer coming down the street. Um, but I am all for this. I think that I think this city council, I think the town needs to get the snowmobile trail through this community to help business owners, to help resident, help other people to survive these winters, survive living here in the Northeast Kingdom. We need the tourist dollars. We need the tourists back. They may find us in the winter, come back in the summer. Now we have people coming up here four seasons it this needs to go through it may not need to go through this neighborhood it definitely should have an alternative <coughs> route across the ice because the ice hinders everybody but we need to get this snowmobile trail through this town and it's up to the city council to pass this through we are a tourist area we need the tourist dollars believe me that's all I have to say <coughs> I have to agree with Frank. Uh, Frank, I sometimes don't plan to buy my house for there in the morning. Wake me up. I don't have a problem with it. They're doing the job. I just wanted to offer when I looked at the Newport City map an alternative, which is that if <coughs> The vast trail, for the purposes of coming into Newport, came across the Palin Farm. All of that area is, you know, not not being used by anybody right now. And um, then it could figure out how to get down to um, the, any of the access roads and straight into um, and straight into the mall, which they want to go to. Um, there's hardly anything. The road, the Sumsic Bank Road, has almost nothing on it. Um, and I, I think that at one point they must have come in that direction. And I don't see why they can't still do that. And then no one would be upset by them coming into the city. So that's an alternative route. The Sumsic Bank Road is federal. The, the federal government controls that. That's the interstate. You're talking about the interstate access road? Mm -hmm. That's federal government. Okay, what about coming from Gardner Park, which we can <coughs> um, That I'm going to have to leave up to Mr. Goslin. 
But before I go there, let's get some more questions. Um, I had Eileen Aluzzi, Margaret Derrick, then Derrick Renai. And then I'll get to you, Ken, after. Okay, so. Um, a couple of things. One is, um, while I am not a Newport resident, I'm a Derby resident. I am the director of the North Country Career Center, and I'm concerned for the safety of the students that are at the high school and at the career center because they use the bike path for walking. They go over to Prouty Beach. Um, they spend a lot of time there. Um, so that's one safety issue. Another safety issue is sometimes they take snowmobiles to school in the winter. So if they're going to take snowmobiles and then they're going on this new proposed path, and then there's also commercial vehicles on there, who has the right of way? And I know that it's been said, well, it, it hasn't proved to be unsafe, but it also hasn't proven to be safe. So I have concerns about safety for our, our residents, such as Mrs. Staniforth, who walk, the kids who walk. And the other thing I'm really concerned with is this seems to be um, a proposal that came about in good faith, and, and I support that, and I support snowmobiling, and I don't think Mrs. Staniforth said anything that she doesn't either. But this is kind of the first jab at things. This was the first proposal. I think we should be cautious, as we should with all of our economic development, which I'm a member of trying to get things going in the Newport area, to make a plan, to not just jump in and say, oh yeah, we need snowmobiles because it's going to be the answer. When currently people are upset about it, taxpayers of the city, and everyone isn't on board if there are 150 names on that petition. So I think that we should work with VAST. I think it should be part of our overall economic development plan. But I think we should plan carefully <coughs> and with everyone's consideration, both business people and community members. Can I just say one thing? Um, while I agree with the petition, a lot of the people on that petition don't live and pay taxes in Newport. I just wanted to make that known to people while I, you know, we as a council, we have to weigh all options, but I just want to put it out there that there's a lot of people on that petition that don't live in the city. I know they live yes, in Derby. there are a lot of people who sign that petition, who use the bike path, who come into Newport, and that's where you're going to get your economic development. Because no. you're not going to get your economic development no, but just I just wanted to make that note. I'm not, I'm not. Excuse me. Well, let me, let me, okay. Well, the people who come in on snowmobiles aren't all from Newport either. So no. I think we need to but keep if, things But my other concern, if you're concerned about safety, the high school allows the students to use snow machines, correct? And they go down the, the bike path already. And they, they get come out. across the lake. No, no, they get out of the bike path and they go off Dutch Street right now, too. They go all around. The so, but okay, let's go to Margaret and then after Blair and then Derek after that. I'm trying to. I'm not no, Brian, quite you're as down the list. I've got some people ahead of you. I know, I know. I'm you not make quite as eloquent or no, articulate okay. as these last speakers, but I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I've been a Newport resident for 50 years. Um, my husband has lived here all his life. My husband, I'm Margaret Derek. My husband's Michael Derek. Um, he's lived on Taylor Street, which is in the city limits. We live on the corner of Union and Bluff. Recently, this has nothing a lot to do with anything, but my husband was sick and he started walking. I'm very proud of him. He walks every morning. His walking trail is a crossroad. Right now, the vast trail goes by the high school. It goes down to um, Jillian Street, down, he has a loop. So it's, it's where the vast trail is now, it's where the proposed trail is. He does not, he's, he, we are not anti-vast by any means. I grew up in, I, good, they want to come in, great. They used to come across the lake, there used to be tons of snowmobiles across the lake. We're so sorry it doesn't freeze over anymore. But he does walk, and he notices that he cannot walk where the vast trail is along um, the football field. He says it's too chopped up, um, it's not easy walking, so he walks in the road and gives um, free pass to the vast and the snowmobilers. Um, he's 
concerned with walking down Broadview Street. I had all his notes. I'm sorry, I'm not being very good. Oh, it's okay. He's it's concerned. Okay. He's concerned both for the safety and his comment was, and this isn't like my husband never really says too much, and neither do I. But he says, I think maybe something will happen, and they're waiting for something to happen that's not good. He says. He agrees with snowmobilers coming in, but he doesn't agree with them being on our streets, taxpayers, and we are paying for those streets. I don't know if you've seen Prouty, Prouty Street, where the snowmobiles go over, and we have to fix that road and sidewalk. Have you guys walked over the years? Have you? Anyone? Have you known how it was torn up? We have to fix those streets. Also, the bike path is all torn up along the high school. We have to fix those streets. And I would assume down Broadview, those streets will be torn up as well. And we'll probably pay for those as taxpayers. That's a side note. But our main issue is safety. We are city residents. We have all the city, the ambulances, the snow plows, the school buses going by. We have the methadone clinic. Everybody walks by and throws their trash on our street. We don't say anything. This is part of being in the city, and we understand that. Snowmobiles is something I, as a resident, agree that they should have access to the commercial businesses, but it should not be residential. I as a taxpayer, my husband as a taxpayer, we do not want it. We would like to find an alternative route. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say that I think Newport should definitely have some real access, whether it's right now, which I, mean, I hope it is, but if it doesn't happen now, I hope that they definitely continue working on it. It's something that we had a lot of years back, and a bunch of different things, and it kind of went away, and we'd like to see it again. I think it's something that does help the businesses, because I can see a direct correlation from one hotel to the other with snowmobile business. You know, I can look at books and go back about 10, 12 years ago when we could get into the city and see numbers that reflected that, as opposed to now that doesn't happen. Same with you know the Derby Hotel. We see a lot of snowmobilers. We interact with them on a regular basis, and they would love to come to Newport and visit our restaurants and go to the gas stations and go to a movie and do all the stuff they do in a vehicle, but on their snowmobile. But we hear it time and time again, there's no way for them to get here. And yes, the lake is access, but all the businesses lose about a month, roughly, if we do that. So maybe the current isn't the answer. I don't know about that. But I really think that we need to get with, you know, like they said, other areas, other <coughs> cities, and get access into the city. It's not a magic bullet. It's not the end all. It's not the answer for everything we're going through now. But I think with everything we're facing, I think we need pieces and blocks. And this is just another piece that can add to our city. So I hope it's approved. And if it's not, I hope we continue working on it and do approve something. what I want to look at. That was the Google Earth put out. Well, that's okay. Well, the VAT, VAT puts out a great app. I've been <laughs> looking over the whole, the whole no. list. Uh, we'll go with Ken and then Brian. All right, if, if they came into town and they went down in through Party Beach, <coughs> and down on the main part of the beach, around that point that would come out at the end of Broadview Street, how much beach space is in there? Does anybody know? Almost not. Zero. Uh, I walk there in the winter and actually I walk there with my dog in the winter as well There's and in the winter there. there is hardly any water and you can, you can walk I mean it's all sand you have plenty of access I'm just trying to get them out some way. and there's no water <laughs> okay yeah. well, as long as I live here I've never been down here yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so then we had Brian can you finish, Ken? No, I know. Okay, no, I just, I just want to make sure. We have Brian, and then I think I saw Charlie Pronto in the me. back. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead. Okay. Yeah. That's okay, I just, wanna, for me. I just want to bring out, I'm not, I'm not against snow machining. However, when the snow machine first came out in the 50s, they went putt, putt, putt because they had 12 horse engines. Now, they got 100, they can go 120 miles an hour now. Back then, they, you could get them up to 20 or 30 and you're doing good. Um, so you have the speed and being an excellent law enforcement officer and thing like this, it's very hard to control you can't control snow machines like you would car traffic. And uh, the vast trails became known because of that fact. That's why the state of Vermont put the vast trails in to be able to keep the snow machines from going all over and cutting people's fences and things of this sort. Uh, the golf course, well, a couple years ago, had a restaurant they opened in the wintertime. And uh, the trail went behind my home and went over the golf course. And they found out that they got off the trails and ruined some of the greens on the golf course because they didn't stay on the trail. So you got, it only takes one apple to, to uh, rot the whole barrel, so to speak. And uh, so you have to, if, if you're going to have snow machines, first thing is, and I agree with somebody brought something up, is, uh, is if you're in a hurry to do something like this, it's going to be bad. You've got to study everything. Uh, signs going to have to be made uh, for speed limits for snow machines. Uh, all this has to be done because otherwise it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, so this can't happen overnight. And the, the proposed route, uh, like you say, uh, on the, they had a snow machine route through uh, the waterfront plaza at one time. And uh, they were, the snow machines were taken in the place of cars. They wouldn't let the cars come in off the causeway because they decided they were going to cross where the railroad crossing is there, and they wouldn't stop. If you have uh, 25 snow machiners and they all decide to go, they aren't going to let you in, so you're going to be sitting out there on the causeway until they get out of the way. And that happened. So. There's a lot of aspects that should be studied before a route can be <coughs> established. And, and, uh, and of course, safety is the big thing, uh, especially with the speeds that the snow machines can get. And these people come up here from down country with the best machines they can buy. And those best machines have the best motors in them that I can, that, and I can tell you that for a fact. And they're going to use them up here because they can't use them where they come from. Yeah, um, well I come at this from a little different angle. I mean, I've lived in for most of my life. The rest of the time I lived in Iowa Pond for 15 years, which was the snowmobile capital of the East. Um, <clears throat> When I moved to Island Pond, I, by, by the way, I'm back, I am now a resident of Newport, <laughs> um, but when I lived in Island Pond, I kept wondering why the hell Newport doesn't allow this. I mean, it, the, the, the business, the economic vitality that it brings to our community is unbelievable. I don't believe that you can, um, I, I would like to see them go one step farther and come across the railroad bridge and get into the, the parking lot right at, right at downtown. But, um, That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, you can't have access into the city without affecting someone. And I can understand living there where that would be an issue for those people that live there. Um, but for the betterment of the community, I mean, you're talking the season is 10 weeks. The, the noise problem is vastly reduced from what it used to be because people use four-stroke motors now which are a lot harder. And that's all they're making now, pretty much. Um, but the economic boost that it would give this community is unbelievable. I, I ran a business in town for 25 years, dealt with many of the business people in town, and I know how, how much they struggle all winter long, you know, trying to make a living here. We wonder why we don't have things in this community. The reason we don't have things in this community is because we don't have people coming in here. We need the dollars. Um, 
I think you could regulate it. The, the people that were worried about the walking on the bike path, uh, we have sidewalks for that. I mean, you know, not everywhere. Not everywhere. But, um, but wherever. I mean, I didn't interrupt you at any point. But the, um, the uh, I just, I, I think all of those things can be worked out. Um, and I just think it would be wonderful for the city. I'm having a mental block. I, Tammy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know when I can care. Hi, I'm Tammy. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely not a Ghostlin or a Gray. Don't have the big name. But I live over on Hoskins oh, Street. Yes. And let's keep it simple. Please. Okay. Let's not, let's not make it personal and attack, you know, or make it, you know, against business owners. Okay. I live on Hoskins Street, which is right by where they want the snowmobile chair to go down. I used to live on Prospect Street, which was noisy, very noisy. I moved over to the other side of Newport because I wanted to be in Newport, but it was it was nice and quiet. Besides the fact that we have the East Side having their music late, I can deal with that, but I live right there. I have two dogs I walk. One got hit by a car and is petrified of cars. And snow machines even worse. I walk that loop to get out, get exercise with my dogs. And I think that that would be the worst thing to do. For them to be able to go down to the east side, drink, do whatever they're gonna do, jump back on the death trap snow machine and go flying past us again, where they're not gonna be able to see us. That corner is sharp, it's dark, they took out the lights. My daughter almost hit a guy that was passed out in the middle of the street last year on Hoskins Street, he was passed out. They took out our lights. She almost ran this guy over. So since that happened, they did put in one light down where she almost hit this gentleman. But I think it is a horrible, horrible idea. It's not going to benefit anybody, really. Second. Um, <coughs> Mr. Shanette, if you wanted to speak, and then she put, and then. Okay, um, these questions would be basically for Tom and Mr. Wilson. Um, one, does the snowmobile route, and that would be on the other slide, <coughs> the one that shows the um, Vista parking lot. Yes, okay. <coughs> Does that snowmobile route go on to the recreation path by Wendy's? It looks like it does according to that photo. The way I've drawn it up, it, yes it does. It does not have to stay that way. Um, there's quite a few options once we get down there. Um, even going on the grass behind Wendy's, behind City Cinema, and that way, and then getting onto the parking lot there. I don't. I just kind of drew up a couple of options. Okay. Um, is there a gate that runs right along the path that would prohibit them from getting on the bike path? Well, this portion of the fence along the tracks and then where the retaining wall is. Right. But they could cross uh, Nina's field and access that path. Okay, but in this particular option, it shows that it gets on right here. And isn't there a, a fence right there? No. No. There's no fence right there, the so they can't access that, that path. Okay. Uh, next question was, uh, does the recreation path fall under the jurisdiction of the city or the state? We own it. Okay, so it's the city. Okay. Thank you. And the last one, uh, which kind of uh, echoes what uh, Mrs. Derrick said, uh, damage the recreation path and roads. It, it does damage uh, Proudy Drive over by the Lucas property in the Cross, and as well on Union Street, where they go from the armory across there. Um, who was, who's going to pay for the damage that it certainly would do if it goes along the recreation path, either along Freeman Street, down through the park, or <coughs> down through this area here? In the past, we have uh, individual clubs have worked with their local municipalities and jurisdictions on coming up with ways to fix it. If we fixed every single road crossing we went across, we would be broke and wouldn't exist. Um, the damage, or I call it, like to call it wear and tear, mm -hmm. is kind of part of the 
of the it's the the bad part of having the good the snowmobilers come in. Um, trying to think of a better way to word that, but it's the ri it's the risk versus benefit. Unfortunately, there is some wear and tear with plowing our roads, but we still do it, right? Um, so. Can I say we would fix everything? Absolutely not. That would make a promise that I can't keep. Um, but I would certainly do my best to try to sit down with the local club and determine um, the best way to fix it. Now, the difference between over by um, where you're talking about where it crosses, um, over by Bluff Road there, what's that road called? Crowdy Drive. Drive. Crowdy Drive. <coughs> um, that is, that's one concentrated spot where the snowmobiles go over in the same area. Um, and it's also on the main trail. This would be a feeder, so it would be getting less traffic because it's just people coming down to the businesses. And they'd also be spread out over, you know, the, the snowmobiles are not going to be in the same exact spot on the road every time. And also when they get into the Vista parking lot or the, the Wendy's parking lot, they might go to Wendy's, they might go to Hoagie's, they might go to Rite Aid. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to split it up and you won't notice it as much. Cool. Thank you. Mr. Jeanette, may I ask? Oh, a second. I want to give uh, Ann Shillo, and then we'll go back to we'll go back to Margaret. And I'm going to go to Ann first, and then I was just going to suggest that before you um, vote on this, now that we have the additional information about the houses being 25 feet from uh, the snowmobiles, that um, you put a snowmobile 25 feet from the city count each of you city council members house let it run for five to ten minutes um, per day thinking maybe that's about how much time it's going to do it uh, when it's when you've got five or ten of them coming down or more per day even more probably um, and and see whether or not you can tolerate the noise because why should you ask citizens to tolerate a noise that you might find offensive if it was 25 feet from your house at 11 o'clock at night and you were trying to get to sleep or you had babies that were trying to get to sleep. So I, I think you should experiment with that before you take a vote. Um, I'd like to respond. My neighbor has snow machines and they do run them. They go up through the woods. They run across the street and they go, that's how they get they don't go down the street, but they, they're right across the street from me, and they go on part of the street to get into the woods to go to the fast trail. So I have heard the snow machines running. Um, and they don't run at 11 at night, and I believe the proposal from Mr. Goslin was that they would not run, the trail would be closed at certain hours at night. Yeah, that's an option, and the city can set that curve. Because that's something he mentioned in his presentation, <clears throat> that, that would be, this, this feeder trail would be closed after a certain hour at night. And I so, thought he was saying 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, last time, but I could it, be wrong. It, it can be adjusted, however. It can be adjusted. Possible. But as far as hearing snow machines, yes, <coughs> I've heard them. My neighbor, um, and they had their snow machines. They don't have them now, but they did. They had like four or five, and they would start them up, and they would go into the woods. One actually down the street from me would go every day using a snow machine <coughs> for a while up my street to go to work. And so that's how he made a shortcut going up the street into the woods to go to work instead of driving his vehicle in the wintertime. So I, I, I have heard the noises of snow machines going by my, my house. I can't speak for anyone else, but I just wanted to let you know that I have heard that. Um, can I go to Margaret first and then Jillian? Fine. I'm just speaking for my husband again because it reminds me of something about the damage on the streets. And I understand that in the snowmobiles, um, do are on the Bass Trail now, and he is concerned about the damage that is done now, and you said, well, what they bring into the city will outweigh the damage. Well, already they're damaging our street, and they're not coming into the city, and he wondered who's paying for that. So that's one thing. As a taxpayer, my husband is very into the bottom line. The other thing is he said, if the snowmobiles go down, not one paw like leaves your house and goes wherever and comes back. The, whatever snowmobile or groups of snowmobiles, we all know snow. You know, we all snowmobile and it's fun. And there's not one person that goes. It's usually a group because that it's social. It's fun. And so, if the snowmobiles come into Newport, they have to go out. So that road on Broadview, yes, it's an access road, but they're coming in. And when they come in, they got to go out. So that road will have, I would expect, 
a lot of use and a lot of wear and tear. So that's just my and my input. <laughs> right, no, no, yes. Um, what they're proposing, I, I had it measured, it's 1,600 feet of pavement. It's not just crossing the road at several points. So basically what you're talking is running snowmobiles on a road, on 1,600 feet of road. And as Margaret just pointed out, there will be significant damage. So it's not just a few crossings here and there. It's, this is the road. This is, these are, will run on the roads with cars. So I don't really think you can compare it to just crossing over a main road. You're talking about a lot of traffic, a lo um, and Mr. Galson, if I'm not mistaken, in the last meeting of December 4th, this, the proposed hours were 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. with the groomers coming through at night. So I'm not sure how you control when the groomers will come through because um, if they have to groom at night, that's a whole other issue. And snowmobiles, I don't know who goes out at 6 in the morning snowmobiling. Um, I'm sure people do. Um, but 6 to 11 was the last proposal, which seems quite a lot to bear for the residents who are 25 feet from this. We want to check in. Oh, Bernie, are you still there? Yes, I am. Excellent. Just want to make sure. Wanted to make sure and <laughs> wanted, wanted to know if you had any thoughts since you are a business owner down in the plaza. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, and first of all, thanks for all the city council members uh, joining us on Saturday. That was a wonderful event. Um, Basically, I'm, I'm proactive anything that's an economic stimulator. You know that. I've worked with you on dozens of things. In light of, in light of uh, Walmart, in light of the CB5 debacle, um, anything that we can do as a community to offset uh, the, the, what's happened through the recession and, and Main Street, to bring any new uh, players downtown is critical, and I'm, I'm totally supportive. Um, I'm working in collaboration with the city, as you know, on the 1,000-foot uh, the new uh, waterfront path. I think that's been a discussion as part of this vast and fully supported. We would love to see people coming in, and I've heard comments about Wendy's and Hoagie's and cinema. We would uh, work in collaboration with the community to provide parking on the excess parcel next to Vista. Um, I've worked with VAS on several locations. I will tell you this. They're respectful, um, they, will, they work in collaboration with the community, and by the way, this, I've heard a lot of concerns, but remember, what I'm understanding, this is not a 10-year deal. This is a one-year pilot project. Nothing's perfect, um, but I think the uh, benefits far outweigh the concerns, and I think what we need to do as a community is to work with the concerns through the winter and ameliorate those uh, issues that come up. But I think it's incumbent, the, the gentleman from VAS has already commented, he's, um, he's willing to work with the community. There's a lot of activity. I think it's worth doing, and I, and I highly promote it. Um, the new machines are quieter. Um, I, like I said, I've worked in several locations, and any issues that come up, they quickly address. Um, I think the community has stated that if there's any damage, the VAS will be responsible. So I, I think it's an appropriate measure to try on a pilot program for, for a year. I will commit whatever I need to do as owner of the shopping center and part of your downtown uh, with the path, with parking, and uh, collaborate. Uh, anything that we can do to provide that uh, to happen. It's just it's one it's one metric. It's not the it, it's not a panacea. It's not going to change the economy, but that with ten other things will. So I, I fully, fully support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a gentleman in the back over here. Yes, I'd like, I'd like to tell the council that the idea to bring the Skidoo Trail into Newport should be done. We could discuss this for two more hours. We've got several individuals here that will not talk to anybody by the time we're done. I think the council needs to take a step forward and say, one way or the other, because 
if you agree to try this for a year, I could guarantee you that we could furnish the individuals to make that very safe. And I got one gal right here shaking her head. I'm sorry, ma'am. You the give us you give us excuse me. You give us one season and you and I will be talking over dinner. Mm, I doubt that. I know it. I know what you're saying. Okay. But it needs to be tried, folks. Really, but this we could talk about this for a long time, but it needs to be processed through regulations. But the policeman was here last time, he spoke, he's ready to speak to us again. The groomer being out there at night, if the council so chooses not to have it there, hey, we'll, we'll cooperate and all, any way that we can to make this happen. I was just going to quickly address the damage issue. I mean, you're talking about a main corridor trail that's been in probably 70 years older. No, how long has that trail been crossing by the high school and or by the hospital? I mean, it, it's been crossed for 20 years. That's how long it took for that damage in a condensed area. So I know damage is definitely an aspect, but you're seeing a, a totality of something that's been there for a long time. Okay, and let's go. Um, I'm going to go. Jillian had her hand up, then I'll go to Eileen after. You had your hand up. I, I just want to remind um, the council that, yeah, it's false. Automobiles are, uh, are much quieter enough. They still are manufactured at 82 decibels. And, you know, if human hearing is impaired and, and hurt at 85 decibels, they may be quieter than before, but there still is potential for harm. I also would like to remind the council that um, other municipalities and other countries where this has been done very successfully, they set limits to how close snowmobiles can be to people's homes because of damage to um, the individual's health. And I think that health is an important issue here and it's something we can't really put a dollar sign on. Decibels are a logarithmic scale. Um, 82 decibels is roughly half of 85 decibels. That, that can, I'm not denying that you cannot. I'm not saying that you cannot have hearing damage from from um, snow from close proximity to snowmobile engines. But that that illustration d does not um, does not demonstrate that. And well, the, the reality is, is, you know, you get more than one snowmobile, then your decibel level goes up. It's not 82 anymore. It, if you have a whole bunch of them, it's significantly greater. And I did actually check this out with a scientist. I just wanted to reiterate that I, I don't, I'm not opposed to vast trails. I have great respect for vast. Um, my family has, has used vast trails for many, many, many years. I think it would be very good for the city of Newport. I don't think anyone, almost anyone, is arguing with that. Um, and I would be willing to work with Mr. Gosselin or anyone else to try to find a different proposal. And if all options are exhausted, then I think we can try it as a pilot. But I don't really feel like we've gotten there yet. I feel like there's still a lot of people upset by this. And in the spirit of being good community members and good neighbors, we should really try our hardest to see if there's an alternative before the city council votes and says it's only a year. Because it's only a year for some people, but it could be a very hard year for other people. Anything else? I'd like to say something. Oh, oh. oh. I'm Larry, and I'd like to oh, consider and respect everybody, but everybody's concerned. You know, you say you get sick in your stomach because you're scared you're going to walk your dog. I've been responsible for 20 families. This isn't a tomorrow thing. This is a yesterday thing. And I think we have to come up with an alternative that takes everybody into consideration. I'm a taxpayer, um, substantial taxpayer. I support this fast trail. You're in a tough position to make this decision, but you're going to be in a tougher position with no businesses left. Do we need to go look out the window? How much 
how much worse is a city going to get? You you have to you have to support this for the businesses that are here. You have got to get behind the businesses that have been behind the city. And like I said, it's not it's 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 a yesterday thing. You know, and as as a taxpayer, and I read the paper when I get home late at night, and I read that we're outside looking for outside businesses to come in. And you've got businesses right here saying do something. So I would ask the support of the council, and again, maybe take a look at a little bit of an alternative, but no pun intended, this is a two-way street. And I don't disrespect anybody, like I've met with Jill, you know, we've, we've got to address those concerns, but I'm sure that um, with Chief DeSanto and with the vast guys, take a look at it. Do something that works. Make it work. Make it happen. Make it happen. And there's no reason why that we have to be in this room and have this kind of dissension. You can't, we can't afford it. Look at where we live. What are we known for? So let's work together and make it happen. I'm sure if we have Tom here, if we have Bast here, if we have Chief DeSanto here, you've heard the concerns, you know what the business people think, make it happen. I bet you if we take those routes, and again, it's a two-way street, okay, so maybe we don't go down Broadview, but maybe for how many weeks out of the year we can use that pedestrian walkway and you relinquish that, work together to make it happen. Get behind us. Thank you. As the route is back to the, coming out back to the career center and down over the hill is straight in, has that been considered? There's not eight, ten, twelve houses on that street. Just as you go into the underpass and go up, <coughs> is that a possibility? Park Avenue. Park Avenue. Yeah, just runs along this railroad tracks. It goes up. I mean, if you're on that side of town, I, there's not that many houses there. I'm going to go from North Country and they probably... I don't think North Country is going to say too much to come across the back part of that. I have no decision making authority, but I'll certainly bring it up to the powers that they... Okay. It's I'll, I'll, I'll we're talking about coming down here. Municipal property behind here. Sure. We're talking about here, Ken. Yes. Yeah, you would come off the back end of the football field up towards the baseball field yep. and out through there and down over the hill, and then it would be a straight shot in. Now, if you travel up and down the Derby Road all winter, these people are more respectful than some of the, the cars. They stop, they do not go out unless you stop. When they go across, they're single bound. If they're two or three beside their suit, they wave and say thank you. If they were enforced on that route, if something's happened and they're taken out, you can try it part of the winter. If something happens, can't be done, then you stop it. I, mean, I can understand where these people are coming from, right? It's a hard it's a hard decision. That was an option that was going to the last yeah. meeting. Right. Now, oh, go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Um, you could do that, but that's fenced in back there. That's what? It's fenced in back there. You can't get from the baseball field to that parking lot behind the career center to the fence there. I know because I run it. They can't go on either side of the field? Well, if you want to go down in front of the high school. Well, right, if they went around, no, no. If they went those, around the outfield park. Those fields are fenced in. Yeah. All of them. I live on Park Avenue. Well, they have. Their side. Just a minute. No, go ahead. Let, let him finish, please. Yeah, that's what I said. <coughs> I live on Park Avenue, and I get, my wife and I get 95% of the traffic coming to and from that high school. Yeah. And a few more snowmobiles isn't going to bother us one bit. 
I'm not going to come in here and say, I don't want to go in by my house. I live, my, my living room is 35 feet from the center of the road. But I don't want to be the one to have all these business people looking at me and say, because of you, my business is going down the tube. I used to snow machine. I can't do it anymore because my back, wife's back won't take it. But time we, every event that happens at high school comes down Park Avenue. I get out of my driveway in the morning to go to work between quarter to eight and eight o'clock. If there's an event in there, we just had an event event there Sunday. I come up the hill and try to get in my driveway to go home. Yeah. Those idiots are bumping the bumper, won't even let you in your own driveway. And that's car traffic. But I don't think a snow machine that bothers us too much. There's two houses on fire now. Well, I want to talk about noise. You all live there when those ambulances go both blasting up through there on Union Street. They might as well be inside the house. Well, Either way you go on that side of town, there's going to be noise. I mean, all I'm doing is suggesting a possible route <coughs> without getting anybody pissed off. All right? I understand that. So you, can't can't all excuse me. you can't get through there. Uh -huh. You can't get through there. All those fields. All right, that's there. fine. How about how wide is the. Because we don't know how wide that is. How wide is the railroad track? Is it. Yeah. No, that is a straight shot. That's a straight shot. Would, that's the obvious location, that. but it's not our prop. That's the obvious place. To put that's it. not our property. Yeah, that's, that's an issue. active railroad line. That's yeah. the other issue. It's only used, I think, once a once a month. But it's still active. Still active. It's still active. It's still active. I would love to put it there. Trust me. I'd love to <clears throat> pay to pull the rails up and put it there. And now you have another path into something. <laughs> really, I would. But until and I don't want to see railroad industry go away. But until no. that happens. That's not a safe place to put on. I, can I just make a comment? Yes. I, I feel very comfortable saying that I would imagine by the time the lake freezes and becomes safe, a majority of people are going to be taking that. Um, but for me to put a trail on the lake and say, this is the way to go to town, and then have somebody go through is just not, not responsible. Um, so your traffic will be cut down tremendously when the lake is frozen and people know that they're getting to the same spot by taking the lake. Um, but to have an official trail that we can make safe to get into the city and um, it also allows us to, those, those couple of weeks um, <coughs> where the lake isn't safe at the beginning and at the end of the season, they can take it. And, you know, I mean, tonight, I drove up it tonight. Tonight would be a perfect night because the road's all covered in snow, you wouldn't even know we were there. You could come right into business, and but people wouldn't want to take the lake because it's just, just barely frozen over. So again, I go back to, let this be a pilot program. Let's try it um, and, and see how it goes. And you guys have to sign an annual permission slip every year. And quite frankly, if it got bad enough to where there was concern, you could revoke permission. You know, it's not like your hands are tied for a year. Um, so that's what I'm coming forward with is, is just to try it out. Um, maybe we can put a little committee together with that's Eileen. And, but I want to, you know, like Dina said, this, this should have been done yesterday. I want to get it started. I want to see what happens so that we have things to talk about. Because right now everybody's going on speculation. And I can tell you, I drive through the city a lot more than I want to, trust me, because I live on the other end of the, of the county. And... I've looked at these other options and they're just not going to work. This, this is the only area where we need to, to come in and be the least amount of impact on the city. When's the next city council? In two weeks, but no, three weeks, but I was having a vote this evening. Because I, I was going to say, I mean, if, if Roger would be willing, I would spend time over the next couple of weeks to, to just just so everyone feels like they've been heard, to really try to exhaust all options and look at things. I would go to the school if you would like me to go to the school to see if they would be interested in any way using any of their property. I'll investigate anything you want investigated. I just feel like Dina said we should be working on this together. It's a great idea, but we don't want people angry and hurt. We want to really be able to come out of this on top. See, I'm coming at this. I'll say my point of view now. I'm coming at this as, as a pilot project for three months. We're already into December, almost into January now. Mm -hmm. So you're really only looking at January, February. 
because by March you wouldn't be able to use it. We're really only looking at two months. You can do that in three weeks. It's going to rain tomorrow anyway. Well, <laughs> we know the house trails. Are well, no, but I'm just. That's, uh, uh, he asked from opinions from the council members. Well, I'm, I'm going to state my opinion. Um, I'm looking at this as a, a, a trial period. This is the way I'm looking at it. I also have to look at it. Also, I'm looking at it. Um, any way we can try to help the businesses. I mean, we have to do what we can in this community. That's the thing. We have such a economic issue, and I would hate to see us not try. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me get my thought back again. Um, not try something. Because, as Dina said very well, she employs, well, I mean, I don't know how many you employ <coughs> now, but I look at the number of employees that you employ, the number of employees the Vista shopping mall employees. And if we could somehow help the economy, because it's a known fact that um, these businesses struggle in the winter. And if we can somehow make Newport where it's not just for the summer, where it's year round. I mean, people mention noises. Have you heard some of the boats coming down the lake? They're noisier than snow machines. I mean, they get those motors going, and you can hear them coming all the way from the border down. And so, um, I know it's, it's, it's almost like an issue where, where I hate to use the term McDaniel, we do in McDaniel, if you know. <laughs> You're going to quote me in that I know in the paper, but that's how it really is. It's like a sticky wicket here. We're trying, what? Three weeks. I just, I just think we need to move, move on on this issue and have a vote so he has some sort of guidance. Go ahead, Stacey. Hi, I'm Stacey. I, I'm a Newport resident. Um, I think we all need to make sacrifices for greater good. Um, I live next to a company that works 24 hours a day that makes noise, a lot of noise, beeping of trucks, whatever. I've also lived by a train. Um, I've also lived by a snow machine trail. And just so you know, you do get used to those noises and you tune them out. Um, like I said, I live to a company, next to a company that makes noise all night long. I don't hear it anymore. And I know that they're employing people and that, you know, families are being fed and they're all watching the water. I, for one, am an opponent. So. All right. Anything else? Did you have did you have something? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, I'm willing to let Mrs. Luzzi have her three weeks, in fairness to everybody in the room and people that aren't in the room, to go ahead and approach the school. And if, like Mr. Johnson says, you've got a couple of fences there, if the school be willing to let those fences come down and use that property and come back to Money Stone. And that would be an alternate route. I would certainly vote for that. And if we find any other routes? I mean, I, I don't know what Roger's looked at already, but... Bring everything. Bring everything. I can, vouch for, I can vouch for Roger. He has looked at everything. Because he met with, before this even came to the council, he met with the public works, just to let everyone know, he met with the public works director, he met with the chief, I happened to be at the meeting, and he met with the city manager. So, and we did scour maps to try to find trails and alternate route. Um, we hadn't thought about the high school, um, but... You think they would actually let some machines go by during the daytime and schools in session? I highly doubt um, I that. I have absolutely no way to know that. No. No, I highly doubt that they would allow the snow machines. <laughs> I think it depends where it is, and I, I don't know. I have no idea, but I would be willing to ask for you. Go ahead, Charlie. And well, I, I, I just got to tell you, the, the, why, don't, why don't you vote to approve a plan to be worked out and compromised by such and such a date and give them a date, January 5th or whatever. And you've already approved it. They still have time to work on it. If they can find a better plan, they'll do it. January 5th is the, the, the deadline date and we'll give them a proposal. Instead of bringing it back another three weeks, have another proposal and have it delayed another two or three weeks. Oh no, it wouldn't get delayed. If it came no. back in three weeks, it would not be delayed. But, you know. Another well, three weeks, you just took another month out of the, right. out of, out of, out of the two months, two and a half months. So. 
I think, Mr. Schnapp, was that a motion or? No, well, not quite, but I just have a question for Mr. Gosling. So say we come back in three weeks and approve some option. How long would it take you to get the trail up and money? The only uh, time hindrance would be uh, one. I'd have to meet with uh, I'd have to meet with Mr. Bernier again just to square away exactly where we're going to go. You know, once we get into the East Side Landing Street area, um, and then it would the time constraint would be making signs. You know, I mean, we could technically open the trail and do handwritten signs, but we'd like to make something a little bit more professional and, mm -hmm. and obvious. Um, I I just you know. I, I, I have thought about this since July, or I've thought about this since July last year, you know, it's, there is no other way, I, I see what you're saying, going behind the high school, one, I doubt they'll let it happen, and two, now we're, if we, if there isn't a gate there, yeah, we could make a hole in it, make a passage through, not a big deal, but now we're, we're literally right in the parking lot of the high school, and that just does not seem, that does not make sense to me. Um, it, the, the, the proposed area that I have chosen is the only route. I, we can sit there and talk about it for three weeks, that's fine. Um, but I would highly encourage the council to move on this and make a decision one way or the other tonight. Yes. I just have a final comment. Um, when they proposed the bike path, we as property owners on that street were given quite a bit of notice where we could digest the information and um, look into it. And, um, you know, I just heard Mr. Goldson say that he's been thinking about this since July. The property owners of Rocky Avenue just found out. And quite honestly, um, I think if the spirit is to work together and to try and find solutions, it would have helped for the property owners to know in advance. And then there is a chance for some open dialogue and some consensus building and some, you know, really good solutions that can work for people. So part of this is it's just so sudden and it's just we did not even have time to even think about it. And it, it's a hard position to put someone in. Um, you know, we didn't buy our houses to be on the snowmobile trail. And I get it. Times change, people change. but. People still need time, and they need they need to be heard. And city residents, we have a stake in this too, a large stake. And I just feel that the residents of my neighborhood were not given enough time to really prepare for this. Can I make one more? Go ahead, Mr. See that bright white building up there? That's the storage facility. And the dark line just to the left of it? Are you looking at this? Yeah. Yep. And there's a really dark line. That's a roof line. No, to the left of it. Right there. There's a fence there and a gate. And if they take that section of the fence out, you're not more than 10 feet from the storage building, and you're literally going through a classroom to get by there. That, that open is not any wider than it is from this wall to that first window. And that's the only place you could get through there, the landing field. And they aren't going to let that happen, I can tell you that right now. I saw a hand over here, and then Tom. Hi, I'm Michelle. I currently just purchased a home on Broadview. Um, if this does go through, what I would like to see is a better curfew time and definitely a speed limit for them to go through. Um, I'm not a fan of them coming down my road, um, but I will be willing to have them try it, but those are th my concerns with them, the curfew time and the speed, because we all know um, snowmobilers can drive fast and it is a safety concern at times. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Oh, no, I was going to address the sign, the speed. And yeah, I mean, we can make any sign you want, and I did propose the 10 mile an hour speed limit, um, which can be easily enforced by the police department, um, as well as the curfew. The curfew was adjustable. What I threw out there was just an example. Um, and the, as far as I know, and George can correct me if I'm wrong, but that club grooms down through there 
they're usually right around dinner time or something like that. So they're not even they're not even late at night. But you can make it a the, time agreeable to. The groomer is situation. very quiet, so the groomer is way quieter than a, than a snow plow moving through. Um, the other recommendation I was going to, that I just kind of came up with uh, um, that I thought might work is we can put up signs that advertise the lake as an alternative trail, but as long as we have the permanent trail, well, I say permanent, the proposed trail going down the road, then at least people have the option. If they don't like water, they don't like water crossing, they can take the road. Um, and I, can, I, can, I will put money on it that over 80% of your snow billers will take the lake once it's safe. But I just hate to see that that be the only alternative. Yeah, so. Tom, we've met a few different times and, and, and talked about this and looked at alternatives. Uh, I, as Jim said, I've been over by the high school. I, I honestly, the school wouldn't even allow it if there was an upper road because you're going right through the middle of that driveway too, on the left side of that building. Uh, we've looked at other avenues. This is this is it. I would I would suggest that the city um, that you give them an access, allow them to do this, vote on it, and if we can find an alternative in the process, so be it. We can change it. Otherwise, they're going to lose half the season. I have one more thing to say. When I was doing the first edition of Eastside, the buses, it was like, I feel, this was how many years ago? 20 years ago. And I had to come down here and say, oh my God, please, can I have buses? Everybody thought, oh, it's going to be a terrible thing. Buses on the streets. I'd like to think that overnight that we're going to have thousands and thousands of snowmobilers. It's not going to happen like that. We're going to get some increased traffic. And again, it's it's a two-way street. We've, we've got to open our minds to allowing business to come in here. You have the power to stop it. The people that are in this room with concerns can come back to this room, but give it a chance to happen. 20 years ago, I came down and said, please let buses come to the restaurant, and we worked it out. Yeah, we have some buses, but I don't think it's anything that really, I mean, we are in a zone up here. Look at where we're at. We've got to consider the businesses that are supporting this community also. So again, I would ask this council to get behind the businesses that are behind you and give it a chance. You have the opportunity to change it if it doesn't work. We have the opportunity to go back. Like Roger says, if they have an access on the lake, they're probably going to use it. And everybody's like, oh, it's going to be dangerous. These guys don't want to wreck these machines that cost this much money going down that street. Give us a chance to do business. I don't remember we, the bus issue. It was, about, it was 20 years ago. And what tw I said, do I then go back down to that council room and say, please, can we do business here? We are here. We are here with vested interests. Support us. And we'll figure this out. But it's not tomorrow. It's yesterday. The market study, we're right here asking you. OK. So someone on the council willing to make a motion at this time. I think you have a motion. Do we have one? That's how you opened your comment. Was there a, well, did you formally make a motion? No. Are you talking no. about, are you talking there about my comment? No. There was no motion. Okay. No. There was no motion. There's no motion. Okay. What is it you were? I thought that someone had made a comment and seconded it in order to get the public comment. No, no, no. I just okay. opened it up. I wanted to okay. do it because I wanted to give, I wanted to give Mrs. Staniforth plenty <coughs> of okay. time to present because she had asked in, you know, email, and I said that she would have, you know, and so I just opened it up. So, I have one more question. Yes. So two weeks ago, when you were here, Mr. Gosselin, I think you had said that it would be great if you could continue the trail across the railroad bridge so that people could get downtown. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about having the trail go behind Vista on the new path and across the railroad bridge. 
Um, and then perhaps having a little parking area in Pomerlo <coughs> Park to avoid the state property. Um, I would be much more inclined to support the whole part and parcel if people could also get downtown. Has that been considered thoroughly? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's doable. I can't speak necessarily for going behind Vista because mm -hmm. I have not gotten permission from the Parmalos to use that. And you know, obviously, it's not wide enough to be groomed. It could. It is wide enough. I went down there and walked it to be a single track snowmobile trail. But no, my goal is to get snowmobiles across that bridge, and that's just as easy as laying some something down <coughs> to protect it um, so that we don't have any issues. Yep. Hey, Ernie, could I put you on the spot? Yes. What's your feeling of snowmobiles coming down and going behind Vista? If it be a one-way, a one-way, you know, to somehow to help them to get, you know, beyond Vista to downtown. Oh, well, that's that's fine. I uh, it, uh, the gentleman that spoke fast is right. It, I think he needs like a 12 foot wide. This would be that, but right. I, I think I, I said, Paul, I'd be more than happy. I mean, we worked in collaboration um, with you and the community to provide that for the community. Um, it's not a walking path in the winter. Um, it would provide, if it was a one way uh, you know, well, program for that, I, I would be highly supportive of that. Single track. Single, single track, track, not one way, but I mean, it would be way. not not groomed because the groomer needs like correct. 12, that's right. Feet. I'm not a snowmobiler, so right. I don't know all this terminology. <laughs> but uh, that is my ultimate goal. I just didn't want to get too deep into it without even getting access into the city in the first place. So yes, that is my goal for sure. And I'll, I mean, that's we're talking about private property, <coughs> and then the city owns the bridge, right? right. So I would have only have to be dealing with the, the private property owners, the Parmalos, and the city to get to that section. What would it take? Yeah. What would have to go down on the bridge to protect the planking? I know you've Is done that, that on that's other not bridges. Plowed in the winter, correct? No, it's not. So oh, it's not plowed. Oh, okay. It's not plowed, but. I would still, I'd have to measure it and get quotes and figure out what it would cost. But, and I'm also volunteering the club to do something that um, they haven't agreed to yet. But yeah, I mean, we we want to make sure that we protected it, or or it was a strict uh, trail closure was put on it. If if it becomes bare, we wouldn't want to run snowmobiles down on bare wood. So, but it would be just something as simple as putting plywood down, or okay. something waterproof. Okay, so there was no motion made at all then. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, with all that, does someone wish to make a motion? Mr. Mayor, this is a tough one, but I would like to make a motion that we go ahead with this proposal as a trial basis, because we have to support business. I mean, if we don't, we're not going to have a town eventually. So I would support that. Still with uh, Mr. Ghostland working with uh, Eileen just to see if there's any any other alternatives. But this is like three months. If it doesn't work, then we can always take back what we did. But I, we we need to support businesses. And so I'm going to make the proposal we go forward with this working. Mr. Goslan Bash with the Chief with Tom. Okay, so a motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Discussion. What are the is the proposal do you have to articulate the hours of operation or when you're closing it down or maybe do you also making a motion on ten miles an hour? I'm making a motion to go forward with a proposal. But we have to work out the other issues with the chief, Mr. Goslan, right. and yeah, <coughs> part of that I yeah. would think that 11 o'clock is too late, personally. Mm -hmm. Right, there'll be. But that'll have to be worked out with. Mm -hmm. But the Schnett, first step is to go forward with it. Mr. Schnett just whispered in my ear, which is true. There's going to be an MOU, a memorandum of understanding, and within that whole MOU. Would be spelled out the speed, the time. I'm correct, right? With the, yeah, we yeah. can do that. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at Laura. It's, it's, 
there's a spot on the permission slip for you guys to put in any, and towns do it all over the place, so you just put in the conditions that you want. It just The most important thing is that I have somebody to work with on this that I don't have to keep going back to the city council meetings. So, right. Not that I don't enjoy them. But. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen? Just out of um, a procedure effect, how will you set like, who would be responsible for setting the conditions? We, the city council, working with the recommendation of our chief of police and public works director. Through an open meeting, or are you just going to kind of do it? Or I'm just curious what the process is. Well, once it's approved here, it's we. It wouldn't be done at a council meeting. So we have to have faith. We have to have faith in council. our. We have to have faith in our. Can we delegate? Can we specifically delegate yeah, that's, that's it as part I mean, of the motion? Oh, you want to delegate it? Yeah. I think that would be appropriate. <laughs> I'm just in the curious Senate. what the process is. Oh, okay. I tell you. What, Okay, the process would be that forward with an MOU. There's an MOU that's worked out, memorandum of understanding that's worked out between Bass and the city. During that process, the chief will be involved, the public works director will be involved, the okay. city manager will be involved, working with Mr. Gosling. And then I would also add that once that MOU is completed, it comes back for the council to give the final blessing saying, This is good, go for it. So if any citizens had any concerns about the MOU, they would be able to raise those concerns at the yes. next council meeting yes. when the council voted on the yes. memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Now I understand what Just a process question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, Brian. There's some. Oh, oh. Wait a minute, Brian, behind you. Did you have something else? You're wrong. I'm just curious if the residents on Broadview would have any. Uh, understanding of what the protocol or the conditions are since it will affect us the most I want to know if I have any opportunity to have any discussion for input as a resident is there any more that wasn't mentioned tonight well I'm just saying if, if you're going to decide on times and hours and speed limits I want to to know if I can have them put into that process, being a direct abutter of this trail. Is it anything different than you've already mentioned your wishes well, at this meeting? Well, I, I... Yes, I think the time. Yes. The time. The time frame. She should have time um, to put. The time, with the, the speed, chief. the signage, okay. the... 10 um, o'clock is pushing the 9 o'clock the I'd like to go over a little more of the insurance piece, liability for property owners, they're not going um, across your property. Well, in the in the case that someone, you know, if, if you potentially that could occur if if there's vehicular traffic and things that there's no plow and the snowmobile, I mean, someone could get up on someone's property. I, I just want to know what happens in those cases. That's all. Chief, let me let me. The chief had his hand up. Let me let the chief speak. I mean this as respectfully as possible, and Mr. Wilson, I concur with your um, motion, but why are you leaving this in my hands to make the decision? You guys are the elected officials. I'm fine with the 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. It seems to work at other places throughout the city, but I'm going to have a pile of people coming in saying, what gives you the authority, Chief? You're not an elected official for the city. And I just, I just don't know. Ten miles an hour seems completely reasonable to me. I, I don't think anybody would argue that it should be less. Well, I don't think anybody would argue it should be more either. Um, the only thing that I don't understand in this MOU no is what are going to be the hours of operation. And I, I, it, there's no public safety buy-in for me to make that decision. I, don't, I, I think if it were 11 p.m. to 6 a.m., that's completely fine. I think others in the room have concern about that. And I'm not trying to shuck my responsibility. I, I will accept it if you give it to me. But I just don't know why. I don't think I have the proper purview for that decision. I have a suggestion. So once we vote, if it goes forward, then we can make another motion proposing those details, the speed limit and the hours. Okay. okay. have to approve the MOU anyway. Yeah. And there's already an ordinance on the city books, a noise ordinance, that there will be none of that stuff between 11 and 6 a.m. The already, city already has an ordinance on that. Right. Because we always we have to wave it when they have a relay for life. So, okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, are we ready to vote? 
quick, Brian. Yes, yeah, I want to move on. Now, now this, uh, your motion is uh, strictly on the proposed uh, access right now, not the alternate. There isn't any alternate. There is no alternate. No. Okay, so it's uh, it's on the proposed one yes. now. Mm -hmm. I okay. said the proposed route. Okay. That was his motion. So if Eileen is still willing to work with Roger to explore the routes, I would love to see that happen. More than willing. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any op opposition? The motion carries. So I didn't, I don't know how everybody <coughs> voted. It was unanimous. I voted reluctantly. <laughs> I wanted to abstain at first, but I voted for okay. so it. So, it, so it's for for enough. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Mayor, um, may I suggest um, copying what Island Palm does and doing 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. for a curfew and 10 miles an hour speed limit, and that would be the conditions of the trail. Um, you hopefully would approve that. I would give the, and, and you're giving the, um, whoever needs to sign the permission slip can sign the permission slip and we can get going on this ASAP. Because if you wait till next meeting to sign the permission slip, then that's, I'm not putting snowmobiles on your city streets until I've got that permission slip signed because that's your release of liability. Does someone care to make a motion as far as the curfew hours and the speed limit? Like you would recommend it. Sure, I'll, I'll do that. So I'd like to make a motion that the curfew, that there be no snowmobiles on Broadview um, from 10 p.m. until 8 a.m. to avoid the, the morning school traffic and that the speed limit be 10. So the motion is to basically you have a curfew from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Yes. Which is the curfew, mm -hmm. and a speed limit to be 10 miles 10 <coughs> miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Is there a second to that motion? I will second that motion. Motion seconded. Now discussion. Uh, this gentleman over here had his hand up first, and then I'll go to you. I just <coughs> just a clarification. From what I understood, uh, which just voted on, was that a memorandum of understanding was going to come to the council in three weeks, um, and then based off of Mr. Nesling's comment, is vast, and this is just for the whole body, is the VAS trail going to be up and operating immediately, or does it have to wait for three weeks? And I just say this for clarification purposes, because I'm confused as to that whole roundabout thing that just happened. Yeah, thank you, Shane. <laughs> my, Mr. Mayor, my um, goal in having you make another motion with the conditions is so that this can get up and going um, sooner rather than later. I'm not saying that it's going to be up and going tomorrow because yeah. local trails are closed still. Um, but no, I would rather not put it off to the next meeting. Um, Correct. They already voted on to go ahead with the trail. And now they're going to vote on the conditions. Once that's done, you can open tomorrow. You get your conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, she proposed <coughs> 10 to 8. Are, is that is that your was that your intent really to direct city the the employed city officials to to make this agreement effective immediately? That is my intent. Okay. Yes. And it's a 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. 10 p.m. 10, 10, I mean 10, 10, 10 p.m. Yes, 10 p.m. to. I mean, we're bringing it. We're bringing them through a res residential area. You know, they're still younger than I am. I go to bed at nine. So I'll give you a little 10 before the college. But I, I'd like to say one thing, just to answer one other question. I don't have a snowmobile trail, but I live on the main route out of here. And for listening to Harley's drive through all hours of the night, it was frustrating. So you know what my uh, response was? I closed the front window so I don't hear them. <laughs> Turn the fan on. I can concur with that. At least we'll be right okay. we'll go to this gentleman and then we'll go back to. My question is for the motion that was specific to Broadview. So, in other words, if I were to take the lake to avoid going to barn houses and go to dinner at, let's say, Lago, I have to still be out of town by 10? Or are you saying if I go on the lake, I'm okay? The lake is not city property. You can do 
Right. That's just Broadview Street. Okay. Okay. Just Broadview. Yeah. So then clarify Lake Street. So it seems like if oh. you come around. Landing Street. Landing Street. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you may have a little broader opportunity on on landings, mm -hmm. landing street. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to access the water to get back on the trail, that scenario that you described would work for you if landing street had a wider uh, expanse of availability, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I mean, I haven't seen any opposition from landing street specifically here tonight at all. No one lives on landing street. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you have something else? I was. I would like to suggest that the curfew be 9 p.m. Uh, not trying to don't close for that. Well, um, I believe my neighbor also, Michelle, believes that 9 p.m. is the correct um, curfew for our street. See, I and I can tell you right now that um, most of my neighbors would also agree. We, I have a lady who's a shut-in. Um, I have an older gentleman who lives on the road. And, um, yeah. My suggestion for 10 is a compromise for you. Um, as it, it ordinarily would be 11, and I'm saying 10 so that you don't have to hear anything between 10 and 11. And my expectation is that there aren't going to be that many people traveling that dead end. Um, it's not a throughway. You can't get anywhere outside of downtown from there. So the number of snowmobiles that would actually be traveling on Broadview from, um, well, really any time of the day, but especially I would think after dark, would be pretty minimal. So I would love to hear if you find that there is way more than, than expected. I'd love to hear you <coughs> back here um, sometime in winter. Nina, yeah, what time do you close on? 10. Ten. On weekends. Well, people down there eating dinner and they're still at 10 o'clock. How are we going to get out of here if you can't go on the trail? Right. So I don't think you want any less than that. Right. you got to give them a chance to get out after they I think the 10 is a compromise. It's a compromise. I understood you to recognize that Landing Street could go to 11, just Landing Street. So if they can travel on ice, they, they have that option. Yes. Just that would be in that mode. Yeah. Okay. The usual city ordinance would apply. Yes. Okay, so a motion to be seconded. Just something else, Mr. Wilson? No, for this part, but I'm still unclear on one thing. Are we going to allow them into Pomelo Park? I mean, that has been suggested. And well, I mean, as long as my hindrance is the city street, so as long as I can get through those and get into, you know, Dina's property and get behind there, then I can work with uh, Mr. Pomelo to, to okay. figure out the logistics so of that. We're not wor yeah. worrying about downtown just yet. Okay. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I I suppose I'll have to come back. If I get to the railroad bridges, I'll have to come back for your permission to do that. Okay. okay. All right. And, and all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. We have three ayes and one no. That's on the time. And on the time. Okay. <coughs> well, it's also on the fact that you can go ahead and start that tomorrow. It was already stated. We were told that you could be up and running tomorrow once you've gone ahead and voted on these hours, which means you've taken the MOU out of the hands of all these people here if they want to say anything. And that I'm not in favor of, and that's why I voted against it. But I think, as far as when it comes to the MOU, all the concerns raised were discussed. There wasn't much more. As far as the MOU goes, the biggest concern was the speed limit and the hours. You guys just outlined the MOU. Right, we basically just outlined the MOU by setting the hours from right. you can't go after 10 p.m. at night before 8 a.m. and the speed limit will be 10 miles per hour. And then um, that's basically the issue, the, that was the remaining issue I foresee with the MOU. Yeah, you, yeah, I don't. You basically approved the MOU. The paper you signed just a formality. 
something to have in hand. I was just going to say as a club resident, this isn't a one and done. So if you find that some particular piece is not working, mm -hmm. you know, somebody from town, whether it be the chief police or um, the Department of Public Works can come to the club resident or whoever it is and say, hey, can we work on this component? And we will. Because ultimately we want landowners to be happy because as the time goes, it gets better and better for everybody. Which I know, I know that VAS does work with landowners, but I know a certain landowner up in Derby who's having issues and they called Vast up, and Vast immediately took care of the issue. Immediately took care of it. They rerouted the trail just a little bit, and, mm -hmm. um, and so. I, I just have a question about snow removal. Currently, the snow is pushed down Broadview, um, where the trail would now come through, and there's a huge mountain of snow there. So I'm curious what the plan will be for snow removal. The groomer is going to take that snow and bring it out into the into the trail out in the Crowley Beach Park. So it's going to push it north? We're going to get it right out of the way for you. We're going to help your snow pile situation out and, and use the snow for the trail. Is that not sufficient? Well, I, I'm, I'm just curious how it would work. I guess I have to see it. The groomer has a huge plate to push it. $27,072. Went back and sharpened that pencil. Well, this is after several meetings, meetings. with all the with, with officials from each of the towns. I'm not sure how many we had, but probably three or four. 20, three or four. 20, 20, 15, 20, I don't know. It seems about 20, 30 hours worth, anyways. This was an Lots inserted of, effort. It's kind and, of, um, I have to I have to just give hats off to Newport. Uh, ambulance. They worked with us. Uh, we also had Coventry and Newport Town present because they also uh, contracted the ambulance. So we sat down as a team 
and uh, Charlie and Mike um, subjected themselves to quite a bit of scrutiny um, going through their budget line by line. And we came away from that experience with a great deal of confidence. And again, I, I want to make sure folks understand, we never questioned your quality. We never questioned um, that important aspect, or, or we have a great deal of confidence in the, in the quality and the aspect of this service, and we know it's very important to the community. And I was going to just add that this increase will allow them to continue the 24-7 Having someone at the ambulance garage—I call it garage—the ambulance facility. Because it used to be. So I know. I know. I call it a garage. Because it's much better the way you were. I can tell you that. Um, at the ambulance facility, 24 hours, seven days a week. Right. Yeah. Right. And so. That's same, same service. Same there. service as before. So what I want to do, um, I just want to demonstrate what our budget looks like. We're going to take a look at different scenarios. So to bring you back into our budget, because this directly relates to uh, our, our total operational budget that we're presenting, it's a direct link. When I generated this budget, at the time we didn't know what Newport Ambulance was going to do. So as you can see, I level funded it right across the board. Um, we assumed there would be some increase, but we didn't know what that was going to be. Now that we have the final figures, I just want to show you two things. I want to draw your attention to our recap page. Are you good? Yeah, Sorry. I was just highlighting. Okay. I'm just having the numbers. I just want to show you that this is what we propose level funding the, the uh, budget. This number and this number and this number are the three important numbers. And I want to show you what happens when I add their new number in there. So I put that number in there. It changes this number down here, but on your recap page, this is what happens to your budget. It changes by 0 0.89. Oops. It changes this number by, again, $27,072. You're still less than a percent on your overall increase, which is something that I'm pleased with. Um, again, we talked about the um, impact of the budget, and we came forward with what we call a level-funded budget. And that means no increase in services, but no cuts in services either. So those are the numbers that I wanted to point out to folks with a new number in there. And you used a conservative grand list. We used a conservative grand list, and that's really important to emphasize that this number uh, is likely to go up. I don't know how much it's going to go up. We should find out in the next week or two. No, well, we've got another <laughs> over a month of appeals. No, but, but don't they? Last time when I heard the count, it was still 90 appeals, so I don't think it's moving. But don't they give you a number? Doesn't, doesn't property valuation still have to give you a drop dead date and a number per that date? No, no. no they, they've sent their corpus and their and CO, POD's and everything in already. We got that today. Okay. Um, they're all set. What so this is going to do, if, if it winds up higher than $315 million, well, the rate will adjust right. down a little bit. Right. We started the reappraisal at $321 million. I can't tell you how far down it's going to go because we don't know until this is all over. But I, I don't think it's going to go down six million dollars. I can tell you that. It's not going that far. Not from what I've seen. I've been typing up the final reports. I don't think it's going to get down that Some much. Some of the property appraisals have gone down. I don't think you're going to see a million dollars worth. But you did use. But I want to stress was you used a conservative grant list. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's all based on three hundred and fifteen million. So the other number that I want to show you, again, based on the 315, the difference in your tax rate, that's what you're looking at right now. 
this is anticipated based on what we know about that number we just articulated. This is based on that number as well as the increase in the ambulance. And I'm, I'm, I'm advocating for the council to move forward with the ambulance's proposal and enter into an MOU for 2018 based on the new numbers. My reason for advocating for that is um, if we don't and they go to appropriation, they're naturally going to ask for the higher amount of 180, 185,000. This allows the city to control it. It also continues the MOU, which I think is really critical. It's, it's important for you and it's important for us to move forward with that level of confidence. As was stated in the meetings that we had, the, the lending institution <coughs> for the ambulance when they buy new ambulances, they much prefer that the ambulance have MOUs with the municipalities versus just appropriation because it helps with your, I guess it helps with your credit and your borrowing and you have to borrow to purchase a new ambulance. And you said the bank really stressed that they want to do that. Two, and they're in the years, contracts. Two years ago, without a contract, they, re, they refused to give us one. And I suggested that we go out and get contracts with them. <clears throat> they had some changes. Of, we've done business with them for a lot of years. It wasn't because we never made our payments. It's just uh, different people came in. They scrutinized our financial things a little differently, and they said they didn't want our... We were basically at the whim of the voters, and <coughs> on and on and on. And anyways, you know, we had contracts with the five other towns that we deal with, so... Um, made a huge difference last year when we finally got everybody to enter into a contract. We don't want to go backwards, which is part of why we came back with this program. I mean, we, you know, we all work together. We're all in this community together. Um, I don't want to see the quality <coughs> of the ambulance service go backwards, which anything less than this, I mean, we're going to be really squeaking it to get to this point. Our people are not going to get the raise that we had anticipated. We're going to have to put that off. I feel a little bad about that. So we've given up things and some equipment that we're probably not going to buy unless we get a grant. I feel a little bad about that. But I mean, we, you know, there's a give and take all the way around. Uh, but the contract with the towns is is almost essential for us to move forward and be able to purchase ambulances and. We need to purchase ambulances as well. And I, I appreciate all the work that all the towns did because I was at all of these things too and I know I sent them lots of homework and so it wasn't just the meeting time that we were spending there but there was an awful lot of stuff that was um, gone over in and out of the meetings. And I, 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 you know, I appreciate it. My board, we spent four hours coming up with this new thing trying to scratch our heads on where we're coming. So. It's so appreciated because now it allows us to take a unified approach. Yep. And that gives a sense of security for the people who need the ambulance service. And that was the ultimate goal coming away from this exercise. So I, I got a fairly um, favorable response from the other two towns once yep. with these three results. So yep. I'm not going you know, to that later. Questions from council members? On this? Go ahead. So you said no raises for staff and you're not buying some equipment. Are there any other changes you've had to make to accommodate this yes. lower figure? We, 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 we took, <clears throat> we had a donation this year that we were going to put into a future fund for ambulances and stuff like that, which had not, we, we actually received that, believe it or not, um, two weeks ago? Yeah. So, <laughs> so very recent, um, so it was not in, I mean, we didn't have any knowledge of it, it was not in the original budgets. Um, and we're putting a little more than half of that into our, uh, if you saw our new budget, into our operations. operations. Instead of holding it back, which, and that's a discussion we had too. Don't you guys ever keep any capital reserve? 
we have a fifty thousand dollar line of credit and we've always been able to bounce back and forth and we were hoping we, we got a the donation was forty forty three dollars forty three forty three dollars forty three thousand well i'm used to the forty three dollar ones when i saw the forty three thousand it was like what <laughs> um one thing that i want everyone to know in the room too that hurt the ambulance was the state caution they implemented a provider, a provider tax, which added eighteen or twenty thousand to their cost. So it's based upon three percent of our of our receipts. Three percent of their receipts they have to pay to the state of Vermont. It's called a provider tax, and they they made the ambulance do it. I found out that the DNA has to do it. All these organizations, and it's something that the state put through. So, gotcha. and that they, that they weren't expecting. So, we didn't know anything about it. I mean, and I was like, and Mike Marcotte, who was at the meetings for Coventry, said, yep, the state did that. Well, they told us. I mean, we knew it could possibly happen, but then there was some deal where we were supposed to get it back. And you're not getting it so back. We're not getting it <laughs> back. And neither is the hospital, and neither is. Yeah. So, so they, they did, however, provide us with the tax. But you're not going to provide us with the means to get it back. <laughs> like they said, you were supposed to get it back. Yeah, they told us it was going to have a net effect on, our, you know, so that's a, like, just zero like, effect on our budget. So that's a cost shifting from the state, just like the feds cost shift to the state. The state's cost shifting to the local municipality. And and uh, the federal government uh, put a mandate on any new ambulances going forward for. Don't quote me exactly, but let's say the, the current stretchers and the locking mechanisms that we have for, for an ambulance would sustain a rollover with somebody up to 350 pounds, and the new federal guidelines that they decided they were going to put out, they had to sustain a rollover to somebody with over 400 pounds. 800. Eight, is that what it is? 800. Okay. So, um, our $20,000 stretcher and our $15,000 mechanism to go into the ambulance that we could take out and use on any new ambulance going through it became obsolete. So the new ambulances that we bought cost us about $40,000 more for that. I mean, it's just, you know, and we tried to impist, and we, we actually had a little more revenue this year, which helped sway part of that off. But, um, about $40,000 a month. <coughs> where we're at, basically those two items were, were, were Okay, so we would need the, a motion to enter into an, uh, a contract with the Newport Ambulance? To renew. To renew the contract. To renew the contract. At the 132.205, that's what we need a motion for. I have one more question. You have committed to applying for grants? Yes, we have. We have already applied for grants, and Laura is going to hook us up with somebody else that thought we might. So. I'm in the uh, second round of USDA grants. Uh, I've got to provide them with. Uh, there's always more documentation to provide them, with, so I'm finishing that up probably tomorrow. Uh, that'll help us put some of the equipment. Uh, we have, for the last three years, put into the uh, fire. Uh, what's it called? American Fire Grant. Uh, thing for a new truck, 3% uh, of whatever millions of dollars that they put into that granting process goes towards EMS services, so it's highly competitive. And we've made it through several rounds last year, we're hoping this year we'll make it through several more, but it's a long process before you actually see your stuff coming for us. And a lot of those grants are, like the one we're trying to get now is a little over 50000 That would buy the equipment that we wouldn't be able to buy. We have to put some money into it, too. That's why we were keeping that other money. But that 20000 that we still have uh, could be applied so we could get that. So that we're, you know, we're Some of the grants, too. They, they right. Some of the grants, not only they look for cash, but they look for in-kind work. Mm -hmm. so, well, and we're hoping the designation that Newport just received or, or has received will help us. So, the so, USDA grant you have to will only cover a, a maximum of fifty thousand right. dollars, and that's a percentage wise based on what where in the reef area you are. 
Uh, usually with Newport, it depends on the year, we're 45 to 55 percent. So we have to spend well over $100,000 to get the 50000 But what's a new ambulance cost now? No, that's that's just for no, 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 cardiac no. machines. That's just for cardiac, cardiac machines. machines. New, new yeah. ambulance, depend, you can get anywhere from 140 to whatever you want to spend. To, to uh, just, yeah. we, we usually do the lower end. Right, right. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and renew the contract with Newport Ambulance Service, uh, increasing the amount from 132,205. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Okay. Made and seconded. Any other discussion? I'd like to thank the uh, the city manager and everyone at Newport Ambulance for for having been open-minded and coming together and working this out. Um, and I hope that, especially in the in the already discussed grant applications, that we can we can work together going forward and and be uh, be allies to provide this great service. So I'd like to thank you, thank you to everyone again. I'd like to extend your thank you to Seth, Jamie, Jim. <coughs> Becky, uh, who else was it? Mr. Wilson, the mayor. Right. We spent uh, a lot of time to attest to how hard we all worked. To work the last meeting coming. was four hours, three hours. The last meeting yeah, yeah, was half of that. When my vehicle got sight swiped while I was here. Oh. Yeah. Between here and our <laughs> meeting, it was a very long day for us. Yeah, I took my mirror out. So, okay. Did you have a question, Brian? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> so I like to ask. I, I had to use the ambulance uh, for my wife when she was sick. Uh, quite a few times, so I appreciate the ambulance service and I appreciate the service. However, um, uh, I, I'm going to ask questions that nobody else wants to or doesn't want to get into, but uh, unless I have to go through the Freedom of Information Act, can you tell me on ambulance calls how many were drug-related, alcoholism, and domestic? And, uh, and this would be Medicaid, <clears throat> which is not Medicare, it's Medicaid, and that's my taxes. And uh, how much would that be in that budget that they handle? Because I'm sure there's more drug, drug use that goes to that hospital and an ambulance. There is a regular person or, uh, that lives here, or even an older person. And uh, we're paying for that. The taxpayer's paying for that. And, uh, okay, and, uh, that's, we got the gist of the question. Yeah. I can't answer it. Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Mike? Well, uh, before you do, I'd yeah. like to say, why does it matter? And a, a medical yeah. event is a medical right. event, regardless yeah. of the cause. It could be a two-year-old right. who was being yeah. babysat by her grandmother who accidentally ingested something from her medicine cabinet. You, I don't appreciate the judgment implied. And what your question is, Brian. I'm glad you don't because nobody else wants to do that. You but know, but so it I gets mean, down to the a, bottom question, it's though. A, it's a legitimate question in the sense of med between Medicare and Medicaid and who pays for that. Medicare I work for and I pay Medicare. Medicaid I didn't have to work, but I'll get Medicaid. Well, I can answer it generally and, and yeah, avoid you can, those can you do it, sort can, of questions. Well, it, but the bottom line is when it comes to Medicaid, there should be no discrimination. There is none. No. And that's the way I look at it. There should be no discrimination. The whole issue with Medicaid, as Senator Jeffords, when he was alive, would always say, is the government, the federal government, has never funded that portion properly, you know, when it comes to Medicaid. We, we, we never we, ask the question, who's paying for this when we You're not supposed to. No. We never do. You're not supposed we, to. We pick up, we do lift assist all the time, we get paid nothing for it. I mean, and that's part of where the city's contribution comes Correct. in. Correct. For picking up those that you either can't afford, don't have, or it's not covered. Correct. By, by regular medical. I mean, I'll let you answer. Yes. Okay. Uh, not to get into whether it's opiate related or anything else, because I really can't do that under, it probably could, but I'm not going to because I'm afraid of the requirements and stuff, but it, it's no secret there's an opiate problem in the Northeast Kingdom. 25% uh, of our income is uh, through Medicare, which is the federal program. 25% of our business appears to be in Medicaid. Uh, the rest of it is private insurance and self-pay. And the rest of the money that we get comes from contracts with the towns. But uh, 
we don't qualify any call or anything or are biased on anything, whether it's opiate, uh, heart attack, uh, stress related, hangnail, we, you call, and I know this sounds simple, but I always tell my call, if we get a call, we haul, okay? We go to, it's not our emergency, it's the people's emergency. Well, I, I might have brought that out wrong. I understand that. Yeah. I'm just saying that uh, when you bill, you, you have a billing that you have to bill these people to get you money. Yeah. So you know who you're billing. Yeah. Whether you're billing Medicare or Medicaid or a private insurance company or anything else, you're billing this, these people to get the money back. Mm -hmm. And I, we're not, I'm not discriminating on how or hard tax or babies or anything else. I just want to bring out the difference that taxpayers have to pay because of these different programs that are out there and which is which is too bad and that's what keeps the prices up and, and they keep them going. And it's too bad, but it's uh, it's all government back of course and, it's, uh, and probably nothing we can do about it. But if the public should know <coughs> that uh, this is happening and it's uh, <coughs> And it's uh, more so in this area. It's happening. No, I'm going to cut you off there. It's happening all over the country. The opiate issue is not a Newport Northeast Kingdom. It is a major issue throughout the United States. So for you to say that it's mostly here, no. It's all over the country. It's all over the state of Vermont. Um, and so I just want to let you know that it's not unique to Newport, Vermont. It's not unique here. So we need to have a vote. Um, we had a motion and second, so then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for your hard Merry work. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and keep up the your great work that you do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you guys. For Thank you guys ever have a question? Yeah. Let's give us a call. I will try to uh, do a tour sometime or something. Or something or meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Do a tour sometime. And I do extend, yeah. sure. It's Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Just call Mike. Michael call. I, I did extend, uh, what, several months ago yeah. to all of the board to come over and see the facility. Mm -hmm. We're getting a new roof on. Uh, that was another cost. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a work call. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, don't tell my wife. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, well. Thank you very much. Good night. Work with the tucker tucker. Okay. Okay, the next item is budget review and vote. Laura? So that item of the ambulance was the last remaining detail in our budget. And now that you've resolved this, I uh, think the budget might be ready for approval. And uh, Mr. Wilson had a question. I just want to get to it so I can answer it for everybody. It was on municipal retirement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Municipal retirement. <coughs> we had questioned why we were hovering in the 114 range in our budget and suddenly shot up to um, 139,000. You'll notice in the past years we um, consistently overspent that line item. Our actuals, well, you have to look at what we budgeted in 16 17 and what we actually spent in 16 17. And, uh, what we I, we know we're going to overspend that line item. This is a result of a new retirement plan for the police department that's kicked into place. It's also anticipating the maximum amount of employees that the organization could have under its present structure. So that includes a supervisor foreman for public works, for example. Um, it includes uh, the half-time position for the economic development specialists, <coughs> assuming that the um, budget gets passed. Um, so again, we try to anticipate the figures that we have the most <coughs> conservative numbers possible, so that we're not surprised at the end of the budget seat, at the end of at, at the end of the <coughs> And if there's no other questions, go ahead. I got a dumb question then. If you know you're going to overspend, <coughs> why not raise it a little bit more so you don't end up? Overspending. That's what we did right there. 
Okay. If you look at our past history in that line item, mm -hmm. we have what we think is um, uh, pretty pretty accurate data. So you got what eight eight thousand dollars extra right there? Yeah, right there. Right. One thirty nine is what we're proposing based on the structure of the organization. Right, but your sixteen seventeen budget versus actual is eight thousand dollars more. You're looking at this number versus right. that number. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Your seventeen eighteen budget. You've got it one sixteen, or well, let's say one seventeen thousand. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what the actual is on that right now? Uh, I'd have to open up the envelope. Um, okay. I don't, but you can, I would assume we're somewhere around halfway. <coughs> just based on where we are in this one here, and nobody else has any idea off the top of your head. No. So, but with potentially two additional employees beyond that, and the the standard that we we've seen to overspend significantly. We have the D plan as well, which is now the D plan is a higher okay. contribution rate, and we have that. Apparently, never have any employees. Well, if you add eight, if you add eight eight thousand to one sixteen, you're going to go one twenty four. Then you get the right. new lease insurance in there, and a new half time employee for the. Okay. That's not very. That's why. So, you, so you're assuming then that 139,000 is going to cover without any extra overspending. Okay. Because it's a percent, right? It's a, we have to, yeah. The employee yeah. has to put a percent in, and we have to put a percent. Right. But, that, but that that is a very prudent estimate based on on all the changes. <laughs> right, but you also have to remember it's based on current staff. Mm -hmm. If you know staff and changes during the year, whether it's a person. You know, could be making a different wage. You know, that plays into it. So it's not always going to come out yep. exact. But this year we did tie it to the salary line items that we budgeted. We okay. took that retirement and we built that in there. So you where it wasn't just a get more of a guess of, you know, where have we been following on this line yeah. item? Okay, so we should put this number in there. What does that mean? You know? Thirty nine. Okay, so, so you, basically you've increased it. <coughs> By twenty-three, a little less than twenty-two thousand, some odd, over last year's budget. Over the budget, right? You look at what we spent. Most recent right. actual. Yeah. So, so it's seventeen thousand over the budget. That should cover it. Well, yeah. so we put that number in there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Happy. Any other questions on the the budget? We need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the budget. I'll second. Present. Mr. Schnett made the motion to approve the budget as presented, seconded by Mr. Merriam. Discussion. One of the er other areas where there's a significant increase is in communications. Mm -hmm. And that's spread out for the budget. But if you look at the number from last year, I think that was 73,000. This year it's 89,000. That's a whopping increase. What, what's that for? Website. It's for building a new website. And we've gotten a couple of estimates. And um, once the budget is passed, I'll bring those estimates forward. Just want to make sure that I may have left. I did leave early the last meeting. So um, this number includes the city's share of an economic development person? Yes, it does. Okay. Which would be basically the NCRC amount plus another 5000 That is correct. Okay. And the benefits, or is that built into that number? That's built into the total number. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Last year's budget increased by almost three quarters of a million dollars. This year, that number is still in there, and there's an increase of another 58,000. And I know you're calling that level <coughs> funding, but for those of us who are the payers of the money, that's not level funding. So we've normalized the three quarters of a million from last year and added more to it. For those of us citizens who are paying this, that's a walking bill. The biggest issue last year was a loss of revenue, and the council did not want to cut services. That's the bottom line. That's 
but, but, it doesn't I mean, address but, my point. Well, no, but the point is, I, I think it does. Did you want us to cut services? I mean, last year I proposed cutting a non-essential rec department. I had my head, I had my head chewed off. I did. My head was on a platter because nobody wanted to cut the rec. You know, but no. Sir, let me let me finish, please. Everyone, we lost revenue. We lost eighteen thousand in this year's budget from the state. The state cut the payment in lieu of taxes by eighteen thousand. Um, they've also increased our, our obligation. They also our, our right. Salaries. We just got another permitting. We got another right. fee increase. Oh, that's right. You we had another fee increase that's in this budget from the state. We have a new permit fee that's in this from the state, and so. You know, um, something that is but let me go back to last year. We had a loss of revenue, and it was either do we cut the police? I don't think we should, especially with the issues. I mean, everybody knows we have that, the opiate issue, and many other issues facing the community. Do we cut the plowing of the streets? Do we cut? And then, so when you lose revenue from the state and cost shifting, look at the poor Emmets. I mean, they had the $20,000 increase that all of a sudden came from the state. We're seeing more cost shifting, and it's coming. So that was the big thing last year. We understand how you got to those figures, but for those of us who are paying it, there is a limit to how much more blood you can squeeze out. Many of us are on fixed incomes. Well, what would you propose we cut out of this budget? I'm, I'm, Where would you propose I bleed next? Well, what no, would you like? I mean, would you like us? In my opinion, <coughs> I'm going to get my head chewed off again. The non-essential is the rec department. Look at many communities in this area that doesn't even have a rec department. We could cut that. I don't want to. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to, but I'm just proposing. You know, if you truly want to cut 100000 out of the budget, we just immediately eliminate all rec programming. Or you eliminate the rec department, but then you still don't cut all the costs because you've got to, you've got to roll over the maintenance of Garden of Park, Prouty Beach, and the Gateway into the public works budget. So you're only really saving in reality maybe 80,000, 90,000. So, I mean, if you want if you want a three quarters of if you want three quarters of a million dollar cut, you're going to have to really eliminate police officers, you're going to have to eliminate public works people. I mean, that yeah. is what we You're going to have to eliminate more than right department. No, I know. I haven't looked at where we are on the actual expenses on this year's budget. Becky has a lot. I've moved the last couple of years. But I suspect we're right around 50%. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna, our year is gonna cost us 3.8 million dollars. There's a couple factors that went into that three quarter million dollar increase. It was years of level funding, mm -hmm. one, and using surplus to lower the tax rate. If the city hadn't used a surplus to lower tax rate and gone up a two and a half three percent increase every year, we'd be in the same exact spot. Mm -hmm. Here we are today. That went on for years, and all of a sudden, and I warned the council for years, don't do that, you're going to come back to bite you. Mm -hmm. And last year was the year. And there's nothing you can do about it without cutting something out of the budget that everybody wants to keep in. And like Paul said, if you, if you can tell us what you want to cut, I'm sure the council will consider it. But, I mean, I've worked on this budget as much as anybody, and there's nothing in there you can cut. I know it's a lot of money, but facts are facts. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, reason for yeah. where we are. Yeah, I just I just don't think it's reasonable for anybody to expect that the council can provide the same services and level fund the budget every year. People need to have raises. Health insurance goes up. The cost of electricity goes up. Maintenance goes up. The cost of vehicles go up. Everything goes up. The cost of ambulance goes up. Um, I mean, I think you guys have done a wonderful job keeping the budget at whatever small percentage of an increase that you have. And I think you do this every year, every year, every year. You know, I don't want to see the rec department go. You think you got an opioid problem now? Don't give your kids anything to do with that. See what happens then. No, I know. I mean, that's why I'm so, I mean, that's just me. It's, it's not realistic. For the people that sit out here, I've been up there. I know what it's like for the people that sit out here. Um, the criticism, uh, and I understand it's tough all over, but to expect you guys to pull some magic, you know, money tree out of out of the air and still provide all the services that they would complain about if you didn't provide them, 
It's just not unrealistic. I think you've done a great job. And the one thing I always like to stress, too, that we face, unlike a neighbor derby or the other communities, 25% of the grand list is non-taxable. 25%. The schools, the hospital, the state doesn't pay. We get a small pilot, but that's the first thing that they want to cut in Montpelier. I know every year I get down there and I say, don't cut pilot, don't cut pilot. They did cut it. They did cut it. Unfortunately, it didn't work. It didn't work this year. They cut it. Um, that's payment in lieu of taxes. So, but when you have 25 percent, you know, we're the county seat, and 25 percent is non-taxable, and everybody's, you know, wants the services. That hurts us, um, and that's that's the big issue. It truly is. Any? Go ahead. We had a motion in a second. Anything else? True, true level funding is a 1.8 percent a year increase. This is a decrease in real terms. Right. And if had previous councils seen fit to make responsible approximately 2% or 2.5% a year increases for the past decade, we would be in almost exactly the same situation. It is an optical illusion that there was that large of an increase in effect. And I know the, the Laura's predecessor kept warning about the, um, yeah. he kept warning, John did, about the reserve fund. It's going to run out someday. Yeah. Um, we, we almost did last year. Almost did. And that reserve fund, what's there now, is what is even less than what the auditor recommends in case you have a natural disaster where you have a major crisis. Well, well, I think half what it's half right. of what they recommend. And there was no offset proposed in this particular budget. We were able to add about $20,000 to it in this last fiscal year for our audit. So that's another plus about this budget is you can start to write that, um, write the ship. In other words, you're not having to go into your offsets for this budget, which is really a good thing to do. Right. Okay. Anything else? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. We're going to move on. New business, Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Uh, Wilson? No. Who's your Not at this time. I have no new business. Any new business? No. Not this evening. Anything new? No, thank you. No. Anything? No? Okay. okay. Move on. Old business, Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. Wilson. Who's your no. The only thing I would say is. The Pomelo, I know Ernie mentioned it, but the Pomelo Christmas party was held this past Saturday up at the uh, Elks, and it was a tremendous success. And I know much appreci appreciation goes out to his dad and Ernie and all the Pomelos for, as Ernie told me, that's been funded for what? Perpetuity. Yeah. Perpetuity. Thank you. He told me that Saturday. Um, and so it should continue for many years, which is a good thing. Because he said they've been doing that in Burlington for 37 years. And this was year number nine for here. Right. Was a lot of work. Then the governor came also yeah. to it. Yeah. So just wanted to say that under old business. Any old business? Any old business? Just the uh, next community visit. Um, for the Vermont Council on Rural Development has been scheduled for January 17th and I spoke to Jenna today to start to work out the details. We're going to try and hold it in the municipal gym again, but that's all I know so far. And um, under old business, I know you're going to get to this on number 12, but I, the Centennial Planning Committee meeting has been canceled for tomorrow. Back to the, the visit, I just want to say that I was extremely pleased with the turnout, considering we had the snowstorm and the bitter cold, and I think for the community dinner they had about 140, and he did a great job on that, and from the sessions that I attended were very well attended, and I think there were some great ideas. Now VCRD is compiling everything, correct? From this, all the notes that were scribed, and they're going to have them up on the wall yeah. for people to vote on at the next meeting. Yeah. And as Paul Carcello says, you could be an elementary school all the way to whatever, and you get to vote on what you think for the community. So that's happening at the next meeting on the 17th. But I just thought it was a very well attended event, and I thought it went extremely well. Yeah. Okay. So the next scheduled city council meeting will be January 8th. 2018 here in the council room 
And now we need a motion to adjourn at 9.15. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Second. There seems to be a question on the motion yeah. to adjourn. I'm, this is a question, but in 2013, <coughs> I did the same thing. I want to wish everybody here in this room a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, I was going to do that after we adjourn, but yes, you Merry too. Christmas, <laughs> Happy New Year to everybody. Um, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. All those for adjourning. <laughs>